So guys what if Naruto was in broken love with pervy to Yuya movie? Rain poured down the valley as if washing away the burns and marks of the battle that had taken place. The final valley, the place where two of the greatest shinobi in time fought till the other was dead, Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju. And now, Sasuke Uchiha and Naruto Uzumaki, the two friends had battled each other with all their might, both were willing to go all the way for what they believed in, one was for power while the other was for friendship, it was a true test for both shinobi but also a loss, perhaps this was a repeat of the past or an event that foreshadowed things to come, either way, fate was very cruel. The aftermath of this grand battle resulted in two bonds being severed, one was the ties that bound a shinobi to his village while the other was a bond that tied him to a friend, Sasuke left the scene with his village and former friend behind his back, he never wavered and only looked on ahead. Eyes singled on revenge, the bond between him and his older brother was now stronger than ever, in order to attain his lifelong goal, he must sacrifice whatever he must in order to achieve power, this was what a true avenger must be, but the road ahead was sad and lonely. Naruto tried everything in his power to stop him from going to that snake, he was even willing to unleash his inner demon just to stop him, but it wasn't enough. His call never reached his friend's ears, Sasuke was too submerged in his own search for power that he failed to notice what was important, he severed a bond that was so precious and irreplaceable, battered and defeated, Naruto lay face up to the weeping sky. His eyes closed in deep slumber. Rain continued to cleanse the land as two forms dropped down near the unconscious boy. A silver-haired man wearing a mask and his little ninja hound, Kakashi looked down at his student with guilt, sadness, and regret, he kneeled down and gently took the boy in his arms, he was too late, he was always late, when it mattered the most, he had failed them. Dark clouds spread ever so slowly up the valley to the surrounding forest. It washed away the battles that had been laid, cleansing all the sweat and blood that was sacrificed to achieve one's mission. In a forest of bones, a lone boy stood and died proudly for what he believed in, his eyes were still wide open as the rain cried for his lost soul, it spread even further to a wide open field of sliced trees where a red-headed girl lay dead underneath a stack of human-sized logs, water from the rain trickled down her form, washing away the blood dripping down her mouth, as if wishing her a final farewell from the world. However, the girl let out a small cough, new blood coming forth, gradually, the rain ceased, making way for a bright light to pierce through the dark gloomy sky. The first ray of light kissed her lips where a scowl could be usually seen, but right now, her face was peaceful like death's touch. A new beginning awaited, ooh my red thread of destiny ooh. Three black cloaked shinobi quickly flew through the trees, rain fell down over their black cloaks and porcelain animal styled masks, all were silent and focused on their mission, it wasn't until they reached an opening in the forest that had them stop on a low lying branch, their posture rigid in anticipation, ahead of them was a great expanse of numerous leveled trees, it was as if an angry, vicious, and rampaging beast had passed by, laying waste to wherever it went. How can an entire forest be decimated like this? One of the cloaked shinobi said, a male, judging from how deep their voice was. Beside him, the second cloaked shinobi kneeled down and examined a sliced trunk nearby. These logs are cleanly cut through, judging from the range of this destruction, I'd say this was done by a high-level wind jutsu. Must have been quite a sight to behold. No one could have survived an attack such as this, and if someone did, they're better off dead, then again, we might find a clue somewhere within this mess, however, this is a lot of land to cover. Right, and this isn't the only area we were assigned to. The third cloaked shinobi jumped down on one of the logs, grabbing the two conversing shinobi's attention. Have you sensed something, Tasuki? The second cloaked shinobi acts. Tasuki shook her head, no, nothing, no signs of human life, but, she glanced back at her companions, you two go on ahead, I'll stay behind and have a look around. All right, stay sharp, the two disappeared to the surrounding forest, alone, Tasuki jumped from log to log, looking for anything odd in sight, the Lady Hokage had formed a search team regarding the recovery team sent yesterday, the medic corps were sent to aid the recovery team and get them back to the Hidden Leaf Village safely, the Ambu Black Ops search team, however, were sent to capture any of the sound shinobi they come across either they be dead or alive. The rain slowly died down until they were nothing more but light droplets here and there, the dark clouds above gradually dispersed, making way for warm rays of light to touch the cold wet ground, everywhere, there were puddles that shone as light reflected on their surface, it made a beautiful scene to behold even with the amount of destruction, but that wasn't what caught Tasuki's eyes. A few meters away was a person with long red hair, but they were crushed by two larger than human-sized logs, they're most likely dead from the impact, she mused. 
Dashing through the obstacles, she arrived at her destination. What she found there sparked her interest, based on the description of Anbu Captain Zo. The red-headed girl was one of the sound shinobi from the joint Hidden Sand and Sound Invasion, one of the four that had a hand on the third Hokage's death, and now, one of Sasuke Uchiha's escorts. Hidden beneath her cloak, Tasuki clenched her fist as memories of that day came to mind, she remembered the sound of crows, the ominous birds flying overhead a body splattered in blood, how her world turned upside down when she beheld his lifeless body, how she wanted to cradle him in her arms and cry in anguish, but she couldn't afford to have a breakdown. Not with her squad of Anbu beside her, her hands were numb as she picked up his precious sword, she had promised to aid him if he needed help with his mission to track down Kabuto Yukushi, so sure she would see him again the morning after, but she was too late, Hayate was already dead when they had found him. Taking a deep breath, she exhaled all the negative feelings inside of her and took a look at the dead redhead underneath the logs, now was not the time to reminisce about things better left in the past, right now, she needed to take this girl back to the village, her corpse might tell some information about Orochimaru. Suddenly, the redhead coughed out blood, startling Tasuki from her thoughts, this girl is still breathing. But how? I didn't even sense her chakra, even now, she whispered, the girl was crushed from the waist below, and her breathing was labored, internal injury perhaps. The redhead coughed again, and Tasuki immediately went into action, crossing both index and middle fingers in a cross pattern. In a poof of smoke, a shadow clone stood beside her, as her shadow clone moved by the girl's head, the real Tasuki took down her hood, revealing purple hair beneath, drawing out the sword on her back, she channeled her chakra into it, making it sharper and deadlier, with a quick diagonal slash, she cleanly cut through logs, missing the redhead by just an inch, as the large logs gave away, her shadow clone quickly pulled the girl out before any more damage could be done. Sheathing the blade and dispelling her shadow clone, Tasuki kneeled by the redhead's side and placed her right hand over the girl's chest, palm starting to glow green, she knew the basics of medical ninjutsu, but she wasn't as proficient at it as any of the medical nin, her hand moved up and then down to the redhead's lower body where it seems the most damage was done, she couldn't heal something like this, the most she could do to keep her alive was to. Moving her hand back to the redhead's upper body, Tasuki placed both hands over the girl's left lung. Treating her injury, when her breathing evened out, Tasuki took off her cloak and carefully put it over the redhead's form, that should at least keep your body warm, she said, before lifting the girl up and carefully maneuvering her body so that she was riding behind the Anbu's back, with everything set, secure, and in place, Tasuki jumped off the logs and out of the damaged forest, making her way back towards the hidden leaf village. Ooh, Kakashi flew through the trees with Pakun following right behind him. They had found Naruto at the final valley and were heading back to the hidden leaf village. Of all the places where both his students had battled, it had to be at the place where the first Hokage finally defeated Madara Uchiha. This time though, the Uchiha won the fight, Sasuke won, but at least he spared Naruto, it gave Kakashi peace of mind to know that both were still with him in the land of the living, death was such a permanent thing, if losing any one of his students would feel as painful as losing Obito and Rin did, he never wanted to experience such a thing again if he could help it, he couldn't afford to lose another comrade. What did you feel? Minato sensei, when we both lost Obito and Rin. When I lost you to the nine tailed demon fox's attack, I, he stopped his train of thought and looked back at the unconscious blonde he was carrying on his back. Naruto was sound asleep with a serene expression painting his features, so unlike his loud and hyperactive persona, his wounds were serious, but they were already healing at a fast rate, he would be alright thanks to the nine tailed demon fox inside of him, that at least comforted the Jonin, Naruto would be alright. Kakashi quickly looked ahead as he spotted movement due southwest, an enemy perhaps? No, is it her? He couldn't tell for sure, but it looked like her. Kakashi quickened his pace, following the blur he had seen. Ooh. Tasuki sensed a presence coming towards her, she reached for her sword, gripping the hilt tightly, but soon let it go when she realized just who the chakra signature belonged to, their mission was supposed to be kept secret from the others, she could boost her speed and minimize her chakra's presence to somehow lose him, but this was him she was talking about, he would just catch up anyways, he was her senior after all, but the question in the air was, why is he here? Tasuki maintained her speed, waiting for her former Anbu captain to catch up, moments later, a silver-haired man dropped down the trees from her left, emulating her speed level, Kakashi, she greeted. Yugo, he eyes smiled, Pakun, the ninja hound suddenly interrupted. Both shinobi sweat dropped, Yugo faked a cough, Kakashi, during missions, I would ask that you call me by my codename, Tasuki. HMMN. Kakashi blinked back an eye, 
looking thoughtful. Ah, I see, that won't be a problem, Yugo. The Anbu shook her head with a chuckle, she glanced at the Janin beside her and then at the Genin on his back. What are you doing here Kakashi? I thought the medic corps were the ones supposed to assist the recovery team. Kakashi looked back at the blonde he was carrying, they are, but I couldn't just stand by doing nothing while both my students fought. So Sasuke Uchiha managed to escape, it wasn't a question, she noticed that he was only carrying one, his silence was an answer to itself, I am sorry. He sighed, it doesn't matter now, nothing would change no matter how much I want it to, he shifted his attention back to her and then at the passenger on her back, that girl you're carrying, he narrowed an eye, I am guessing the lady Hokage sent an Anbu search team to capture any of the enemy ninja. She nodded, I don't know if you knew, but this girl is one of Orochimaru's bodyguards, they're the ones responsible for erecting that barrier ninjutsu to hinder us from helping out the third. I see, if she's one of Orochimaru's bodyguards, then she must know some of his secrets, we might be able to track down Sasuke's whereabouts once the intelligence division, a sudden cough from the redhead cut him off. Yugo felt liquid dripping on her left shoulder, she stopped on a large branch. Kakashi and Pakun followed suit, she carefully laid down the redhead and moved the cloak's flaps to examine the girl's upper body, hands starting to glow green. What's her situation? Kakashi acts, her lower body is badly damaged, both her legs are fractured if not broken, however, the cause of internal bleeding comes from her punctured left lung, Yugo answered. Then you should nt have carried her on your back, she stopped her jutsu and stared at the janin, my mistake, my medical capabilities still need a lot of work, she looked back at the girl, I thought I healed it properly. He sighed, well, what's done is done, Kakashi, Pakun called. HMMN. What is it, Pakun? Kakashi looked at the ninja hound closing in on the redhead and taking a whiff of her scent. It's this girl, his big pug eyes narrowed, her smell is familiar, although I can't remember when, I know I've tracked her scent before. Kakashi kneeled down beside the redhead with a narrowed eye. Yugo was getting curious as well as she examined the girl properly for the first time, she was young, maybe a year or so older than Naruto Uzumaki, with long untamed red hair, for someone so small, Yugo couldn't grasp that this kid is, was, one of Orochimaru's close bodyguards, then again, she and her comrades were strong enough to beat Genma and Reido, both Janin level shinobi, almost to their death. Yugo clenched her fist as she remembered Hayate and the third Hokage's death. She knew that she should place all the blame on Orochimaru for the bad things that happened before, during, and after the leaf invasion, but she couldn't help but hate the person who murdered Hayate and these child bodyguards that helped kill the third. Yet as soon as these feelings welled within her, she forcefully shoved them down, this girl was a tool used by Orochimaru, just as the hidden sand village was used and thrown away when they were of no use to him anymore, it's the sad truth of the life of a shinobi, she mused, but then her train of thought was cut off as the redhead was seized again by another bout of coughing with more blood coming forth out of her mouth. Alarmed, Yugo carefully turned the redhead to her side, so she wouldn't choke on her own blood, we don't have time for this, I need to get her to the fifth Hokage immediately. Why don't you let me take her? Kakashi offered as he laid down Naruto beside the redhead. A still moment passed as a sudden thought came to mind. Both Kakashi and Yugo pictured a certain blonde man together with his lovely redheaded wife, but that image soon faded away, and the Janin picked up the girl in his arms while the Anbu carried the boy on her back as they made their way to the hidden leaf village. Ooh, Tsunade opened the door leading outside the intensive care unit 6. Three figures were already waiting there in the hallway. One was the oldest of the Sand siblings. Tamari, while the other two were from the Leafs Nara clan. Shikaku and his son, Shikamaru, who was the squad leader of the recovery team she sent on a mission a day ago to retrieve Sasuke Uchiha. As of yet, the mission was still ongoing as the status of the squad member, Naruto Uzumaki was still unknown. According to Shikamaru, Naruto was the last one who went after Sasuke. The other members were already taken back to the Leaf Village and received proper care. Two of them were in critical condition, it was a good thing they weren't too late, she had just finished stabilizing the condition of Choji Akamichi. Letting out a sigh, Tsunade smiled, he's gonna be just fine. She closed the door and walked towards one of the benches at the side, the antidote worked, the extermination of cells caused by the pill's effects has been rested, she sat down with a sigh and looked at the head of the Nara clan, I couldn't have done it without your help Shikaku, the Nara clan's sacred medicine guide was invaluable, the work that went into that manual, the years of research, well, it's quite impressive to say the least. Shikaku nodded his head with a smile, thank you. Suddenly, frantic footsteps were heard, 
and a call from a woman's voice took the blonde's attention, Lady Tsunade. Shizun appeared from view and stopped just a few ways short from them, Neji Hayuga is safe, his condition has stabilized, and there's more, I've just heard that Kakashi Hataki and Naruto Uzumaki have returned, and they've been examined, Naruto's injuries are serious but not life-threatening, he's going to be okay. Although Tsunade was relieved to hear that Naruto was safe, she heard the unspoken news as clear as day, Sasuke Uchiha got away, she looked down at her lap, brows scrunched down, just two, shifting her gaze back at the dark-haired Chunin, she said, Shikamaru, your mission was a failure, she saw him bow his head, his frame trembling, she closed her eyes, however, everyone's alive, that's the most important thing. Next time, the mission will go perfectly, Shikamaru promised. Tsunade smiled, Shikaku approached his son, laying an arm on his shoulder, and together, both men exited the hallway, across from her, Tamari stood up from the bench and nodded at her, it'll be going as well, I have to check up on Gara and Konkuro. I thank you for responding and coming to our aid. Tamari shrugged, it's the least we could do after everything, she bowed her head again, before leaving the hallway. Tsunade leaned her head back and closed her eyes, she wanted to get some rest at least for a bit from the recent events, but it was interrupted when she sensed someone approaching, she opened her eyes and saw Shizun looking at her with a troubled expression, what is it, Shizun? Her attendant looked around the area first, before leaning in conspiringly, Lady Tsunade, I didn't mention it earlier, but it wasn't just Kakashi and Naruto who returned to the village. That got the blondes full attention, what do you mean? According to one of the medic corps who received them, Kakashi came in with a member of the Anbu Black Ops, they were probably a member of the search team you'd sent earlier. Tsunade furrowed her brows, one of the Anbu search teams, huh? Did they find something of importance? I take it that we got something valuable. Shizun nodded an affirmative, yes, before I came here for my report, they told me the enemy shinobi was going to be placed in unit 4, they could very well be in critical condition. I see, the blonde stood up, lead the way, Shizun. Yes, milady, both women walked down the hallway and followed the path leading to the intensive care unit 4, as Shizun opened the doors, Tsunade saw a member of the medic corps doing a checkup on a person lying on a bed, she couldn't properly see the person's face from her view, just that they had red hair, so she walked closer, that was when she noticed an Anbu leaning on the far side of the wall, it was Yugao Azuki, codenamed Tasuki, Moon. Tasuki disappeared into the shadows and appeared a second later, kneeling before Tsunade, Lady Hokage. Tell me the situation, I've encountered a sound shinobi in a forest near the Land of Fire's border, based on the reports of the three Anbu present during the Lord Third's encounter with Orochimaru, she was one of the snake Sanin's bodyguards, most likely the very same who escorted Sasuke Uchiha out of the village, I would have delivered her to the intelligence division had she not needed immediate medical attention, I've arranged for one of the medic corps to help stabilize her condition. I see, is there anything else? There is, I came back to the village with Kakashi Hataki, and while we were together, his ninja hound mentioned that he knew her scent from before although he didn't remember when that was, Tasuki looked towards the enemy ninja, I also don't know if this is her ability, but for some reason, I can't sense her chakra, even now when she's right there asleep, it's like she's hiding them subconsciously as a form of self-defense. Tsunade narrowed her eyes and shifted her attention to the redhead lying on the bed, curious, someone Kakashi must have met some time ago, as well as possessing an ability very rare to see even among sensory-type shinobi, where the hell does Orochimaru even get these types? She walked towards the girl, and the medical nin moved aside when he saw her approach. She expected this encounter to be quickly dealt with, she would check up the redhead's condition, making sure she would survive, and then hand her afterwards to the intelligence division to gleam out any information they can about Orochimaru, never did she expect to see the enemy shinobi to wear a familiar face, she heard a gasp coming from behind, she couldn't fault Shizun, she almost did so herself, but why? Why her? And why now? Lady Tsunade, is that? The blonde made no move to reply. Just examine the redhead more fully, from the shape of her face to the color of her hair, if the girl would open her eyes, it would have been brown, there's no mistaking it, it's her. How long has it been? A year perhaps. Maybe more. She gritted her teeth and looked at the medical nin beside her, nodding her head, the medical nin bowed and took his leave. Once the three were left inside the room, Shizun asks, do you think she was only there to spy on us for Orochimaru? It's possible, you never know what goes around that bastard's head, but still, I can't believe she's with someone like Orochimaru. Who is she, Lady Hokage? Tasuki asks, Tsunade eyed the Anbu before turning back again to the redhead, 
she was a girl we met a year ago, Shizun and I were in the land of thorns in a town called Kakurishiwa, as usual, I was there to try my luck for a chance of money, but then. So, tell me, why are you following us, uh, what's your name? The redhead crossed her arms, isn't it customary to introduce yourself first before asking for someone else's name? The only reply the girl got was a poke to the forehead, well, brat, it's Tsunade. The redhead gave her a glare, rubbing her forehead, I am not a brat, and it's Tuyuya. Okay, Tuyuya, why are you following us? You have my hat, she deadpanned. Tsunade blinked back her eyes, hat? Actually, your pig has it. Taunton? Shizun axe, oink, oink, said pig piped up. The smile that memory made was now tainted by dark thoughts of deception. Was it all a lie? Was she with Orochimaru all this time? Did he send her to keep an eye on me? That thought troubled the blonde, she was just somebody we met, I helped her, and she helped me later on, I don't know what had happened to her after that, but I never expected for it to be this. Lady Tsunade, what are we gonna do with her? Shizun acts, even though we knew her in the past, she's still an enemy shinobi. I know, the blonde closed her eyes with a furrowed brow, but we need her to survive first, after that, shall be handed to the intelligence division. Ooh three days later ooh, her name was Tiyuya, a girl of fourteen. Red hair, brown eyes, Orochimaru's bodyguard, Tiyuya of the North Gate. Inoichi was looking down at a flute she held in her hands, but as she placed it to her lips, a slicing sound from behind made her turn around, huh? Coming towards them like a raging bull were swirling winds that cut through everything in its path, she immediately closed her eyes as the powerful wind washed over them, there was a scream, her scream, but the sound was soon drowned out by the hounding roar of whirlwinds. The next time she opened her eyes, they were falling. Everywhere they looked was filled with nothing but thick blurry wind and flying wood, everything was being sliced, and the dimly lit forest gave way to the bright blue sky above. Eventually, they landed on her back with a deep thud, she coughed up blood, but even though she was disoriented, her eyes immediately fixed up to the sky as multiple large logs came crashing down towards them, her breath hitched, and tears started to blur their vision. Inoichi frowned but moved on to the next memory, she jumped high above, overtaking a blonde shinobi, Naruto Uzumaki, and falling down to his level where she slugged him hard right in the face. Sasuke Uchiha clutched his shoulder as glowing marks crawled up his skin, covering his entire left side, he glared at them with hate-filled Sharingan eyes, come and try it. She walked up the stairs and opened the double doors as she reached the top, a bright light pierced through the darkness, blinding them for a second, once outside, she glanced back at the hideout she came from. Inoichi opened his eyes, a hideout, this is where they were going to take Sasuke Uchiha. He motioned his fellow analysis team member, Tanbo Tobataki, to fetch the world map pasted on a wall, once he got it, he marked the general area where the hideout was located, the land of rice paddies are better known as of now, the land of sound, give this to the Hokage, it's where the location of the hideout Sasuke Uchiha went to, also, he took out a pen and paper inside a desk drawer and drew a rough sketch of the hideout's entrance. Tanbo took both items, rolling the map, amazing, as expected from you, Inoichi. The blonde waved him off and headed back to the unconscious redhead, the girl, Tiyuya, was encased in a domed semicircle with three sets of seals surrounding her, he placed a hand back on top of her head and closed his eyes. She made a half-handed ram sign, releasing the energy that held up a barrier made of purple flames, after that, they quickly passed through a forest of trees, jumping and landing beside a black-haired man with rotting dead arms, Orochimaru, her companions were also there, the blue-gray-haired boy and large orange-haired boy took their master's arms around their shoulders, together, the five jumped up to the sky. She opened the door, and they saw two people doing something intimate in the dark, she quickly slammed the door shut. Inoichi cleared his throat, blushing slightly, he moved on to the next memory. They looked over at the hidden leaf village and at the civilians walking and smiling by. Tiyuya sighed and closed her eyes, Inoichi wondered what she was thinking, even though he could see through a person's memory, he couldn't hear their thoughts during those times, eventually, Tiyuya opened her eyes and looked at the far off mountain where the faces of the past Hokages were carved, the Hokage monument, she sighed again, before shifting her gaze at the main gate where shinobi from different countries entered the village. Inoichi went further back to the next memory sometime before the Chunin selection exams. There was blood everywhere. On her hands, on the walls, and on the corpse underneath them, Tiyuya was tightly gripping the kanai embedded on the dead mon's chest. Her breathing heavy, he's, dead, she said, her voice small, he's dead, I did it, I, finally got my justice, she slowly stood up and quickly left the room, 
gliding down the halls until she reached outside, it was snowing. Who are you? An agitated voice suddenly whispered. Inoichi stiffened and cautiously looked around, but there was only darkness that greeted him, the memory he had previously seen was nowhere to be found either. There was nothing, he frowned and continued searching through her memories. At the center of the room was a velvet chair, sitting on it was Orochimaru, it's been almost two years since I gave you my gift, over the years, these four little scrawny birds have grown into deadly predatory eagles, with every kill, they go stronger, he said the last part with vigor, he chuckled, do you want more power? Yes, to Yuya whispered immediately, why are you here? The unknown voice whispered again. Like before, the memory he was viewing disappeared, and Inoichi whirled towards the direction of the voice he heard, who's there? Show yourself, he asked loudly, his words echoing all around him, that was when he noticed a red-headed girl nearby holding a single pill, what made his eyes open wide was that instead of looking through to Yuya's eyes, he was seeing her from the outside. To Yuya swallowed the pill, suddenly, she gasped and clutched her neck. Her body quivering until she fell down to her knees. Dark mists crawled up to her legs, to her torso, and eventually enveloped her entire being. From there, something took shape. First were arms that shot out and pushed itself out until a torso was formed. Next were legs that slowly stood up, and from its bowed position. There came a head, Inoichi wasn't sure what it was, but it looked like a person, once it solidified and the mist gradually dissipated, he was shocked to find another Tiyuya. The only difference between the two was that this one had marks all over its skin, the curse mark, it leaned down and whispered something to the kneeling redhead, but what made his skin crawl was while it was doing that, its golden eyes were locked on his. Inoichi took a step back, but suddenly, he felt a heavy pressure being brought down on his shoulders, making him fall down to his knees, he saw that Tiyuya had collapsed as well and that the other one stood up and approached him. You aren't welcome, it said, reaching out and grasping his neck. Inoichi's eyes widened as he felt his chakra being slowly pulled out of him. He clutched its wrists, trying to pry it open, but it wouldn't budge. It was too strong, it got stronger even when the marks all over its body glowed and spread out, its body started to change, its skin turned brown, its hair grew longer and turned from red to pink, horns shot out of the top of its head, and the whites of its eyes turned black as ink, what remained the same was its golden eyes, golden eyes that made him stare into the deepest darkest abyss, it was as if he was drowning into its dark pools. A hand suddenly yanked its hold off of his neck, coughing, Inoichi looked up to see a woman pushing the thing out until it slinked back into the darkness, she lowered her arms and walked towards Tiyuya, kneeling down and caressing her face, from this angle he couldn't see the woman's features as they were hidden by her long red hair. Coughing, Inoichi asks, who are you? The woman shifted her head slightly and raised an arm towards him, there was a force that pushed him away, the last thing he saw before he went out was blue eyes. Inoichi gasped as if he was breathing air for the first time after being submerged underwater for so long. Hey are you alright? Tanbo ran back and helped him up from the floor. He clutched his head and gritted his teeth, what happened? You suddenly collapsed, and the sound ninja, it's her curse mark, it suddenly activated. What? He looked at Tiyuya and saw glowing marks receding from her face, she was still unconscious, so she didn't activate it on her own, but she was breathing heavily as if she ran a mile, he frowned. What the heck was that I just saw? That was no memory, neither was it a barrier ninjutsu, it's something else, something sinister and foul, Orochimaru, was it the curse mark? And who was that woman I just saw? Approaching the girl, he placed a hand again on the top of her head, closing his eyes, he tried to enter that particular mindscape again, but for some reason, he couldn't go back, he tried again to enter through a memory, but it had the same result, he tried again for the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time. Nothing. Inoichi opened his eyes, impossible, what's wrong? Tanbo acts. He shook his head, nothing, I can see nothing, it's as if her mind is locked to me. But, how? Just a few minutes ago you could. Tiyuya's breathing suddenly quickened in short breaths, grabbing their attention, her head lolled to the side, her eyes dazed and mouth ajar, the marks from before creeped up again, covering the entirety of her face. We can't proceed like this, Inoichi said grimly, we need to seal up that curse mark. Ooh, Tsunade followed Tanbo Tobitaki inside the intelligence division, once they walked inside the room, her eyes immediately landed on Tiyuya who was convulsing uncontrollably on a makeshift bed, two people were holding her down, one was Inoichi Yamanaka while the other was her apprentice, Shizun? What's going on? The black-haired medical nin turned around and met her master's gaze. Her expression slightly softened, 
but they were still on edge, Lady Tsunade, Inoichi called me, she turned back to the struggling girl she held down, to Yuya's having seizures, and it's been like this for 10 minutes, it stops, but it resumes again after a while, as the words left her mouth, to Yuya slackened, she lay unmoving with eyes looking dead straight ahead and mouth hanging slightly with saliva dripping down the corner of her lips. Tsunade approached them and saw the curse mark covering most of Tuyuya's body, she placed a hand over the girl's face. No response, she closed Tuyuya's eyes, do you have any idea what might be the cause of the attack? We have a theory that it might have something to do with the curse mark, Shizune nodded her head at Inoichi. Clearing his throat, the blonde explained, it started after viewing some of her memories, there was a figure I saw inside her mind, and I suspect that it was a representation of the curse mark's chakra. Tsunade raised a brow, chakra. He nodded, I've been theorizing this for some time now, I suspect that the curse mark Orochimaru implants on his targets contains some of his chakra, I can sense that the girl's chakra and the curse mark's chakra are different, it's much darker, more foul. I see, but there's still the question of what triggered this reaction, from what I've heard, the other person who has Orochimaru's curse mark never experienced this kind of reaction. Yes, Anko's records didn't show any of this, Shizune agreed, we've read to Yuya's scans, but nothing seems to show up, even my medical ninjutsu doesn't work, her shoulders slumped down, we just don't have much information about the curse mark. Tsunade placed a thumb between her teeth and examined the redhead again, her breaths were rapid and shallow, she was sweating and shivering, the blonde placed a glowing hand over the girl's upper body, then to the lower body, and then back again to the chest area, she narrowed her eyes, nothing, there isn't anything wrong externally or internally, except possibly, she turned to Inoichi, I want you to search for the nearest Hyuga in the vicinity. Inoichi immediately made a set of hand signs that ended with a ram sign, he stood still in silence for but a moment but then shook his head, there aren't any Hyuga nearby but, he dropped down his hands, Kakashi is somewhere around the vicinity. Hell do, send him in, he nodded his head and turned to his fellow division member, Tanbo, I want you to head out a few meters northeast from the building, you'll find Kakashi somewhere along that area with Guy. On it, Tanbo quickly exited the room, Tsunade sighed, Inochi, you said that you viewed some of Tuyuya's memories before this happened. The blonde nodded, yes, I did see some, but they were mostly after the Chunin exams, actually, Tanbo was about to give you the location of Orochimaru's hideout. Her eyes widened, what? Inoichi took a map on top of a desk and gave it to her, he pointed at the land he encircled earlier, I believe this is the location where they were going to take Sasuke Uchiha. The land of sound, of course, Orochimaru did say he built a hidden village, there were sound ninja that entered the Chunin exams, right? He did, but the hidden sound village isn't a village at all, our Anbu never found anything that remotely resembled a hidden village, but with this girl's memories, we might have a chance to locate the hidden base and recapture Sasuke Uchiha. Good work, is there anything else? He rubbed his chin, I did see some of her memories before the Chunin exams but. The curse marks chakra, he nodded, narrowing his eyes, yes, but also I encountered a third chakra inside her, it was shaped like a woman with long red hair, it didn't look like the girl because this one looked older and had blue eyes. Tsunade cupped her chin in thought, another chakra. Suddenly, there was a knock on the doors which opened immediately afterward, the three looked as Tanbo entered with Kakashi Hataki right behind him. What's up? Kakashi raised a hand in greeting, sorry for the slight delay, guy wasn't going to stop until either one of us wins. No time for excuses, Kakashi, I need you to use your Sharingan to check the state of Tuyuya's chakra, Tsunade stepped aside to reveal the redhead behind her. Kakashi narrowed his eyes, the curse mark, he lifted the headband hiding his left eye, his eyes widened, what? Even Sasuke's wasn't like this. What is it? Her chakra is in complete disarray, there's a point in the neck where it's more erratic, it looks like it's eating away her chakra, at this rate, her body will give way, and soon, shall die. Her curse mark is located on the back of her neck, Shizun said, but the question still remains on why would it act like this right now. Tsunade cupped her chin, biting her lower lip, something is affecting her chakra system, and it's connected to the curse mark, maybe something was injected into her, or something she took in. Inoichi's eyes widened, the pills, pills, from her mindscape, I saw her taking pills, and just as she did, the curse mark's chakra overcame my own. Shizun suddenly gasped, Lady Tsunade. I remember she has a small bottle of pills in her possession, looking at how she's from the sound, it might be come from. Orochimaru, Tsunade finished, suddenly, Tuyuya stiffened and convulsed uncontrollably, Shizune and Inoichi immediately held her down. 
Sumade gritted her teeth, Shizun, I need you to get me a sample of those pills, we need to make an antidote to counter its effects as soon as possible. Yes, milady, it's at the hospital, follow me, Shizun ran out of the room. Tsunade followed her but stopped by the door, looking back at the three remaining inside, Tanbo, transfer to Yuya to the hospital, report to me immediately if anything new happens. Yes, Lady Hokage, Tanbo moved over to the redhead and carefully lifted her in his arms. She shifted her gaze to the silver-haired Jonin, Kakashi, I want you to organize a search team to infiltrate Orochimaru's hideout, coordinate with Inoichi regarding any information about it, I'll meet your team in 1600 hours at the gate. Kakashi nodded his head, understood, Tsunade lied awake. Sitting on a sofa and staring at the ceiling although looking at nothing in particular. It was the dead of night, but she still couldn't sleep. Her mind was too restless, what filled the blonde's mind was to Yuya. Who was sleeping soundly in her hospital room, three Anbu were guarding her. As well as a few hand-picked medical nin, including Shizun. Checking in on her condition which had stabilized hours ago. The toxins inside her body were removed by the antidote they made. From all the reports about her, she was a long-range genjutsu specialist. Her abilities were mostly sound-based, her skills earned her a place as Orochimaru's bodyguards although they weren't present when he tried to force Tsunade to heal his arms, still, she was powerful enough to earn her place and to be given the curse mark, the blonde could only guess that it was for that reason that Orochimaru had her taking pills, it probably increased the use and effectiveness of the curse mark, but such things always had a catch. She must have been taking it for a long time, and just by stopping and being cut off from that supply, her body underwent a severe withdrawal, she sighed, there's also the matter of the sound hideout, Kakashi and his team left earlier when she had checked up on them after giving to Yuya the antidote, she hoped they would bring back good news, but there was a chance that Orochimaru would be gone by the time they reached it, only time would tell, speaking of time. Tsunade smiled as her thoughts turned to Naruto. It had been three days since Jiraiya told her he would be taking Naruto with him on a two and a half year training trip. Two days ago they'd left the village, he didn't give a specific date. But he said that they would probably return by the time the Chunin selection exams would usually start, Orochimaru wouldn't attack the village again not without taking Sasuke Uchiha's body, but to do that, he would need to wait for another three years before he can use his immortality jutsu, they still had time, with all her heart, she believed in Naruto, he would come back strong, and one day, he would attain his lifelong dream of being a Hokage, although. Being Hokage is difficult, she commented, looking up at each of the framed pictures of the past Hokage before her, her grandfather. Her granduncle, her teacher, and her predecessor, all had given up their lives for the sake of the village. And now she must do the same, what being a Hokage truly meant was that no matter what crisis may befall on the village. The duty of protecting and raising the little leaves fell on her shoulders. Speaking of leaves to raise, Sakura had asked to train under her, and Tsunade couldn't refuse when she saw the guts and determination the Kunoichi expelled, Naruto and Jiraiya, Sasuke and Orochimaru, Sakura and myself, it's a new generation of Sanin again, she closed her eyes, Naruto and Sakura would follow Sasuke no matter what, Jiraiya and I can only support them from their goal, oh how I wish for a bottle of sake right now. Her thoughts were suddenly interrupted when there was a knock on the door, she sighed, pinching the bridge of her nose, come in. The door opened, and Shizun entered the room. Clipboard in hand, um, Lady Tsunade, I have some, news. The blonde groaned, leaning back on the sofa, please tell me it's the good kind. Shizun's sweat dropped, w well, I think it's good, but kinda slightly bad. She opened an eye, looking at her apprentice curiously, what do you mean by that? Ino how to Yuya as one of Orochimaru's subordinates, I think that status will give us a problem, as well as the consequences of what she's done. We've already established this, Shizun, what are you getting at? Well, the medical nin scratched her cheek, you remember telling me to get a blood sample if there are any more of that toxin inside her, the thing is, I have the results, and I think you'll be very surprised at what you'll find. Tsunade tilted her head to the side as Shizun handed her the clipboard, it read. Patient information patient ID, 750101 status, alive. Name. To Yuya Sex. Female birth date. Unknown age, 14 to 15. Height. 4, 8 feet weight. 84, 2 LB blood type. A it's at the bottom, milady, at the blood test results. Tsunade scrolled down her eyes, landing at the blood test section. A blank look passed by her face as she finished reading it, but when understanding sunk in, her eyes gradually widened in shock, her mouth hung agape, her back sat straight as she clutched the clipboard tightly, 
This is, after all this time, it's no wonder why I mistook her for that tomboy when I was drunk, she quickly read it over and over again, particularly the words positive and uzumaki. Um, L Lady Tsunade, are you alright? Shizun's voice seemed to jolt Tsunade back to reality, blinking back her eyes, she looked back at her apprentice, Shizun, to Yuya, she's an uzumaki. The medical nin nodded, it's no wonder, she does have red hair, and she survived Tamari's ninjutsu too, normally, nobody would have lived after that, should we tell Master Jiraiya and Naruto about this? Tsunade slumped back down on the sofa, looking up again at the past Hokage's portraits, particularly the first Hokage, she closed her eyes as she thought of her grandparents, Hashirama Senju and Mito Uzumaki, together, the Senju and Uzumaki clan were unstoppable. What happened to the hidden Eddie village was a tragedy, she sighed, I'll tell Jiraiya once they're back to the village. And Naruto? It'll depend on her answer, to Yuya? Tsunade nodded, eyes slightly dazed, I can't believe we found one, after all these years, I thought their entire clan and culture would just fade away into non-existence, Naruto has a chance to learn about his mother's clan, with Tuyuya as an Uzumaki, he might just be able to learn their secrets. Shizun frowned, but do you think Tuyuya even knows that she's an Uzumaki? It's been years since the hidden Eddie village was destroyed, she couldn't have been born before its destruction. Well just have to find out, want we? Well, that's true, she has to wake up first too. Ooh two years and eight months later ooh, a young nurse, holding a clipboard, walked down to a room at the end of the hallway, inside was a high-level patient, prisoner. The girl had been in a coma for more than two years, it was her job as a nurse to check up on the patient to see if there were any changes to the girl's condition, but as she opened the door, she was in for a surprise when said patient was sitting up on her bed and looking at her with wide eyes. Why you're awake? The nurse exclaimed as she fumbled at the wireless radio on her shirt's collar. This is code red, I repeat, this is code red, patient number 750101 is conscious. Send the ambu quickly, she took a quick glance at the patient to see the girl glaring at her, she took a step back when the patient tried to get off the bed but ended up face flat on the floor, with shaky limbs, the girl slowly got up and approached her like those undead zombies in one of those movies that Shed watched a few weeks back, thankfully, three ambu came just in time and subdued the girl. The patient weakly tried to break free, but it was no use, she could only shout with a hoarse voice, let go of me, let go, you bastards. The patient eventually stopped trashing, and the nurse could see that the ambu were tying the girl's hands behind her back, she placed a hand on her chest and sighed, but her ease was only temporary as she heard a gasp from the ambu, glowing chains shot out from the patient's back, swinging wildly and knocking out the three ambu to the walls and the ceiling. The girl turned and glared at her, prompting her to fall down on her butt, she tried to get away, but her back hit a wall which left her so scared she embarrassingly slightly pissed herself, she closed her eyes tightly when the patient approached, she waited with bated breath for the feeling of death, but when it didn't happen, she took a peek and saw the girl leaning on a wall. Hands pushing herself up for support, the glowing chains from before were also gone, the only thing left was a girl who painfully tried to drag herself forward. Footsteps were heard, and the nurse saw the lady Hokage coming around the corner, she was saved. Why you? What are you doing here? The patient acts. There was a sudden blur, the nurse recognized the janin, Kakashi Hataki, he used his special eye to throw the girl back into unconsciousness. The lady Hokage approached the nurse and helped her up, Kakashi joined them soon after with the patient in his arms, looking inside the room where the three Anbu were knocked out, he asks, what happened here? The nurse gulped and exhaled out her nervousness, her knees felt like lead, as she took out the Anbu with these, glowing red chains. Both the Hokage and the Janin looked at her in surprise, she what? A lone man stood in a grassy field, staring at a slanted kanai-shaped structure, there were engravings carved on its front, listing countless names of those who died in service for the hidden leaf village, a shinobi's death was shed for love and peace, a memorial stone was built in their honor for their blood and sacrifice, what an honor it was to die for the sake of one's village. To ensure that it continued to grow, and the trees to sprout its little leaves for the next generation to come, though in death they were gone, but in the hearts of their loved ones, their memories were preserved. A soft breeze gently brushed the mon's silver locks as he remembered the days when the two of them would always be in conflict, their skills, ideas, and character were complete opposites, both were at the end of the spectrum, he was cool and collected while he was loud and brash, he would go for the best route, but he would do the opposite, he was the top of his class, and he was dead last, it was funny really how different they were, but when put together. We were a great team, right, Obito? Kakashi I smiled. 
Almost every day, he visited the memorial stone, Obito's body was never retrieved. He was crushed and buried alive by the enemy ninja's ninjutsu, he sacrificed himself without thinking of his well-being, he saved Kakashi not just from death but also as a person, the Jonin remembered the days when he acted cold and only deemed anything good if they were useful to him, friendship was not essential, only the mission was important, he would do anything in order to complete it even if it meant sacrificing his comrades. In the ninja world, those who break the rules and laws are regarded as scum, but those who would abandon either one of their friends are worse than scum, I am scum anyway, so I am gonna choose to break the rules, if doing that somehow makes me less than a true shinobi, then I'll just go and crush all of the so-called real shinobi. Obito's conviction shook Kakashi to the core, his words pierced the Jonin's cold heart. When Obito died, his ideals were passed down to Kakashi just as the Sharingan that now inhibited his left eye. He was Obito Uchiha's living legacy, and it was his friends will had passed down to the next generation of shinobi. But I failed at that part too, he thought, gazing up at the clear blue sky, yes, he taught his students Obito's words, but somehow, Sasuke never got the message, he was, how had put it, basically almost the same as the past Kakashi, no, the one that inherited Obito's will was Naruto, every time he saw his blonde student, he would see Obito in him, their ideals, their aspirations. And my future dream is to be the greatest Hokage, then the whole village will stop disrespecting me and start treating me like I am somebody, somebody important. Kakashi eyes smiled, wondering how his cute little genin was doing, well, he guessed that Naruto wasn't that cute anymore being that he was now 15 instead of 12, Kakashi pictured an older looking Naruto in his head but with the same goofy grin and brash attitude, crossing his arms, he nodded in agreement at his imagination. So this is where you were, figures you would be here, Kakashi, a woman's voice said, interrupting his reverie. The Jonin turned around and saw a familiar face, the woman had waist-length purple hair, dark brown eyes, and red-tinted lips that formed a small smile, eyes smiling, he raised a hand in greeting, hey there, haven't seen you in a while, you go. That's because I am quite busy, putting both hands in his pockets, he gazed up at the sky, ah, lost in the road of life, is that it? Kind of, she chuckled softly, before walking towards the memorial stone and placing a bouquet of white roses at the base. Flowers for Hayate? She nodded, thought I should drop by, it's been a while since I am temporarily free of my charge. Ah, how is our little firecracker doing these days? He acts. Her response however was a deep and long sigh, he sweat dropped at that, I am guessing it's no milk and honey. Yugo shook her head and stood up, you have no idea just how much I've had to control myself, for the first week, I've had the urge to take up my sword and just shut her up. Another sweat drop joined the first one, you're exaggerating, right? She looked to the side, maybe, a third sweat drop sat beside the other two. It doesn't matter now anyway, living together with her these past few weeks, I think I am starting to understand her. HMMN, where is she anyway? She's where she should be, and by the way, Yugo looked back at Kakashi, my visit here isn't entirely in all honesty about Hayate. He raised a brow, oh? Lady Hokage sent me to retrieve you, it seems that your record for tardiness never fails its mark. He rubbed the back of his head, hey, you got me there. Shaking her head with a smile, she took the anbu mask that hung by her hip and put it on, concealing her face from view, it'll be right by if anything happens. I am guessing that Lady Tsunade is expecting them to arrive today, he chuckled softly, this'll be interesting. Ooh. Underneath the canopy of trees were two people walking down a rough road leading to the village of their birthplace, the road they traveled was long and tedious, but for the pair of leaf shinobi, the trip was worthwhile. After all, it had been a good two years and nine months of hard work and training, just the thought of going back home and getting to see everyone again made the 15-year-old blonde excited, his strides got longer, and his speed seemed faster. Naruto, hey, slow down, will ya? The blonde stopped in his tracks, looking back at his white-haired perverted sensei, a big grin lit up Naruto's face as he pointed in the direction ahead of them where outlines of a large looming gate could be seen, I can see it, pervy sage. I can see the village from way over here. Jiraiya crossed his arms, smiling widely, a welcoming sight indeed for its returning shinobi, his face suddenly flushed, and a perverted grin appeared on his lips, oh ho, I wonder if there are any available hidden leaf ladies that want to hang out with this handsome tiger, he laughed out loudly. Naruto sweat dropped, muttering under his breath, no woman in their right mind would want to hang out with a perverted old geezer like you, he sighed and continued walking on ahead, looking more somber. I wonder how everyone's doing, I wonder how much the village has changed, 
a hand suddenly landed on his shoulder, making him look back in surprise. Hey now. Why so glum all of a sudden? I thought you were excited to go home, kid. Jiraiya's words seemed to shake Naruto out of whatever trance he was in, opting for his usual trademark grin, he saluted, okay, let's go. It took the master and student a few minutes to see the full view of the intimidating gate of the hidden leaf village, and as they passed by under its gaze, Naruto felt a sense of overwhelming joy, it brought an ecstatic feeling down in the pit of his stomach. Naruto was finally home, ooh, there were three people inside the Hokage's office, sitting behind the desk was none other than the Hokage herself. Her attendant, Shizune, was pouring her a cup of tea while a female Anbu stood in front of them, the girl had long red hair that fell down to her hips, her face was covered by a cat-like mask decorated with red wavy lines on each side, an arc from the left ear down to the middle, and two small marks spilling at the eye holes. she wore the standard Anbu uniform with a signature spiral symbol tattooed on her right shoulder. I see your training is going well, Tsunade said, now then, how about your control over your special chakra? Any luck? The redhead shook her head, I can't fully maintain it yet, my limit is about 10 seconds, it disappears after that. HMMN. That's understandable, it's only been three weeks since you've started your training, it also doesn't help that your body still needs to recover to fully function. I am healing just fine, she grumbled under her breath, crossing her arms, anyway, about my request, when will you give me back my flute? Tsunade laced her fingers together, gauging the redhead's reaction, I haven't decided yet, I'll call for you when I deem it necessary. The girl's posture stiffened, necessary. I don't understand, I am already cooperating. I've given you everything I know about Orochimaru. I know, but I never once mentioned giving you back your flute. She scoffed indignantly. Why not? Genjutsu is my specialty, not Kenjutsu, or Sensory Jutsu, or even this special chakra I have inside me. It's because you excel in Genjutsu that I want yet allow you to use your weapon of choice. Be grateful that I am even investing in having you trained. While the Uzumaki were well known for their complex and powerful sealing jutsu. A number of its clan members fought with the sword, some of them were gifted with an innate sensitivity to chakra, the rarest being those who were born with a special type of chakra. Tsunade leaned back in her seat, to my surprise, not only do I find you a member of that clan, but you also have an innate ability for sensory ninjutsu, as well as possessing that special type of chakra, it's a shame you don't know anything about the Uzumaki clan's sealing jutsu. Well, sucks to be me, I didn't even know about my damn last name until recently. Tsunade sighed, starting to get a headache, listen, Akage. My name is Tuyuya, the redhead cut off, a tick mark pulsed on Tsunade's forehead, this girl, she inhaled deeply, pinching the bridge of her nose, you will be called by your codename, Akage, red hair, deal with it, you're still on probation, and I don't need others learning the truth about your origins, for now at least, until then, I need your full cooperation. But I've already kept my end of the bargain, and I've kept mine. Tsunade countered, she remembered it fully well. Listen, I don't know how you ended up with someone like Orochimaru, but now, I am giving you a choice, you can either give up any information you have regarding Orochimaru, and after six months of probation, it'll let you become a shinobi of this village. Or, or, Tsunade's expression turned deadly serious, you'll get to stay here and live as an ordinary citizen, but to do that, we would have to seal and block your chakra network, you will never be a shinobi again. The blonde narrowed her eyes, you accepted our deal, you're going to be a shinobi of this village, and becoming one means you'll listen to my orders, so stop whining like a brat and start acting like your age. Start acting like, Akage clenched her fist, I was in a coma, you bitch, it's not my damn fault I still feel 14. Tsunade stood up from her seat, slamming down her palms on the desk and making a noticeable crack in the wood, what did you say? Shizune quickly got in between them, raising her hands in the air, P please, Stop it you too, milady. I don't think she means anything by it, right? She turned to Akage and whispered, you should apologize right now, please? The girl sighed, I apologize, for calling you a bitch. A darkened look crossed Tsunade's face, say that to me again, and I'll make sure you'll wake up next time when you're 40. Akage's shoulders slumped down, she looked away, crossing her arms, I am, sorry, shit, I know I am rude to people, I have a bad habit of running my mouth. That's an understatement, Tsunade said, finally calming down, she sat back on her chair. Shizun sighed, thank goodness. Akage looked back at them, if you want give me back my flute, then at least tell me when he's coming back, it's been a month, and I want to see him, the reason why I even accepted, she trailed off and turned to face the door. What is it? 
Tsunade asks, There are three people coming over to see you, I think one of them is forehead. Shizun sighed again, Please stop referring to Sakura as that. Akage didn't give a reply. Opting to stay silent as she moved to stand by the wall, they waited for a good minute before there was a knock on the door. Come in, Tsunade said, the door opened, and Sakura went inside with a big smile, she gave a quick bow and excitedly stepped aside, pointing at the blonde young man who stepped beside her, Lady Tsunade, Shizun, look who's back. Tsunade examined him, spiky blonde hair, three whisker marks on each cheek, and a toothy grin that could no doubt belong to none other than the Leaf's number one hyperactive knucklehead ninja. A smile lit up her face, well, look who's gotten taller. It's good to see you, Naruto. Shizun beamed, the blonde grinned, placing both hands on the back of his head, nice to see you guys too. Behind the two teens, Jiraiya walked in and crossed his arms with a huff, hey, what about me? I came back too, ya no. Tsunade only waved him off, of course, of course, we all know that. HMPH, you guys don't appreciate me much, do you? He pouted. She chuckled, oh stop being so overly dramatic, Jiraiya, it's good to see you. All right, I'll forgive you just this once, a perverted grin suddenly appeared on his face, but only if you could do me a favor by helping me write my next novel, and I could only do that if you showed me your grand and bodacious body. A fast flying projectile, a cup filled tea, suddenly zoomed across the room, hitting its target and making a mark right in the middle of the toad sage's face. Tsunade scowled, I take back what I said, it wasn't good to see you, you pervert. Ooh, together with Naruto and Shizun, Sakura sweat dropped. She knew from first-hand experience what it was like at the end of her master's ire. I kinda feel bad for Master Jiraiya, but at the same time. He should have known by now not to aggravate her, she sighed as the toad sage grabbed his seemingly broken nose while comically writhing in pain on the floor. She stifled a giggle at the scene, placing a hand over her mouth, but that was when she noticed another person standing inside the room, it was the Anbu Shed recently seen these past few days, sometimes when she visited her master, she would see the redhead giving the Hokage reports and giving Sakura unwanted stares, although she couldn't see the Anbu's face, it unnerved her how the girl's stare felt as if they were boring holes right through her skull. Hey. Sakura, what's wrong? Naruto asks. The Chunin glanced back at the blonde, nodding her head. Yeah, I am fine, it's just that. She looked back at the Anbu who crossed her arms and tilted her head to the side. Sakura didn't know what the girl was thinking, but she felt wary all the same. From the corner of her eye, she could see Naruto looking curiously at the Anbu as well. Tsunade suddenly cleared her throat, breaking them from their standoff. That is all, Akage, you're dismissed. The Anbu looked at her for a moment. Before nodding her head, standing up straight, she formed a half handed ram sign, ready to disappear from sight, but then suddenly, she stopped, her body going rigid. Sakura raised a brow and wondered why this Akage was disobeying Lady Tsunade's orders. Her attention was drawn, however, to a sudden knock on the door, it opened to reveal two shinobi, one being a dark haired chunin in a ponytail while the other was a blonde janin from the hidden sand. Sakura smiled at the faces of Shikamaru and Tamari. She went to greet them and to tell them who was back, but the moment she opened her mouth, her voice fell silent when a sudden mass of murderous intent filled up the room. Sakura turned to face Akage, sweat dripping down her forehead, what's going on? Why is a member of the Anbu Black Ops acting like this? She glanced back at the person being directed at, Tamari. The Janin grabbed the fan on her back, lowering her stance, what's the meaning of this? Who are you? Oh. A shame you don't even remember. Why don't you let me remind you? Akage's hand moved up to her mask. Akage. Tsunade suddenly barked, the Anbu stiffened and slowly dropped her hand, but the murderous intent never faltered. Shikamaru stood between the two girls, raising both his hands, now wait just a sec, we're all allies and friends here, so drop the weapons in the glaring and all, everyone just take a deep calming breath in. Akage's finger twitched, and Tamari automatically went in for the attack. She swung her fan in a downward slash, but the Anbu drew her sword to parry it, using the momentum, she pushed the fan to the side, leaving the Janin open, the redhead quickly moved for a counterattack, but before she could, somebody stopped her, Sakura's eyes widened at the sudden appearance of a purple-haired Anbu, she had a tight hold on Akage's sword arm, meanwhile, Tamari retreated a foot back, glaring at the redhead. By the window, a silver-haired Janin peeked inside, HMMN. Hey, guys, what's going on? K. Kakashi Sensei. Naruto exclaimed, the Jonin eye smiled, hey, Naruto, long time no see. Tasuki, 
Akaj started, but the other Anbu placed a hand on top of her head. Later, the older Anbu said, before looking at the Hokage and nodding her head, well be taking our leave, she formed a half-handed ram sign, before a poof of smoke covered their forms, Sakura noticed Akaj looking at Naruto, the blonde on the other hand looked confused, when the smoke dissipated, both Anbu were gone. Sighing, Sakura placed a hand over her heart, that's a relief, I am glad nothing bad happened, it's strange though that a member of the Anbu Black Ops would act insubordinately, I just hope nothing would come out of this, we don't need any trouble with the San Ambassador, she saw Tamari marching towards Lady Tsunade, maybe I spoke too soon. Lady Hokage, may I ask why one of your Anbu tried to attack me? Tamari demanded. Shikamaru cleared his throat, well actually, you were the one who attacked her first, he trailed off as the blonde answered him with a glare, he held up his hands, whoa, easy there, I am on your side. Tsunade sighed, pinching the bridge of her nose before looking at the sand ambassador, I personally apologize for any trouble one of my Anbu had caused you. Naruto shuffled towards Sakura, hey, what the heck is going on anyway? The Chunin just shrugged, beats me, she frowned after, looking at her master, but still, this is really odd however way you look at it, I wonder, what Lady Tsunade's relation with this Akage, there seems to be some other things going on too, that look Akage gave Naruto earlier, maybe it's just my imagination. There's no need to apologize to me, Tamari said, rubbing her forehead, this just came out of nowhere. No use troubling yourself about it, Shikamari said, but now that's over, he walked towards the two blondes and handed a stack of papers, Lady Tsunade, these are the number of examinees entering for the Chunin exams. Tsunade took them, good work, thank you, Shikamaru. The Chunin exams? Wait, what's this about? Naruto suddenly acts. The Chunin exams are about to start, Tamari answered, she placed both hands on her hips, sighing. Still looking a bit miffed, I've been busy running back and forth your village and mine getting ready for them. The dark-haired Chunin put both hands inside his pockets, yeah, that's right, and I am her escort, it's a drag, and don't ask how it happened, but I've been put in charge of organizing the Chunin exams. The blonde's eyes had a faraway look, the Chunin exams, huh, man, that takes me back. Yeah well, speaking of which, what are you gonna do, Naruto? About what? What do you mean? What do you think? About the Chunin exams, you're the only one in our year who isn't a Chunin, everyone is but you. Naruto stood still for a moment, but then his eyes grew the size of dinner plates, huh? He turned to her, Sakura, you've been made a Chunin? She giggled and made a peace sign, that's right, oh, you haven't even heard the half of it, Shikamaru continued, Konkuro, Neji, and Tamari here, he pointed at the blonde beside him, they've even taken it a step further, they've already been made Jonin. Jonin. What are you even talking about, huh? Naruto's brows furrowed, he suddenly looked troubled, what about Gara? What's he? Gara is our case cage, Tamari answered, I see, so Gara was named case cage, Naruto bowed his head, clenching his fist. Sakura glanced at her teammate worriedly, oh, Naruto. And my future dream is to be the greatest Hokage, then the whole village will stop disrespecting me and start treating me like I am somebody, somebody important. Sakura remembered those words fully well, at first, she thought it was stupid and would never happen, how could a loser and the king of pranksters become Hokage one day? But, Naruto, this is a once in a lifetime request, just bring him home, please bring Sasuke back to me, I did everything I could, I tried, but I couldn't stop him from leaving the village, at this point, there's only one person who can stop him, only one who can save him, Naruto, it's all up to you. Don't you worry one bit. I am gonna bring Sasuke back. I promise that on my life, Sakura. I haven't given up. Listen, I am still gonna keep my promise, after all, it was a promise of a lifetime, right? I meant it. If I say I am gonna do it, that means I will, K, don't forget, my way of the shinobi means I always stand behind what I say. That's great, Naruto looked back up with renewed determination, well, I am not to be outdone by him, I am still gonna be Hokage one day, just you wait, Gara. Sakura smiled, I was wrong, you'll be a great Hokage one day, Naruto, I fully believe it. Ooh, Tsunade cleared her throat, gaining everyone's attention, tough words, but you'll have to surpass me first if you want to be Hokage. The blonde grinned, placing both hands behind his head, right, just you wait, grandma. She chuckled, well, now that everything's settled, Naruto, your training proved to be fruitful, I hope. Jiraiya looked just a tiny bit offended, you think we would have come back without producing any results? Mission accomplished, 
Grandma, Naruto gave a thumbs up. Tsunade laced her fingers together. Huh. I am glad to hear it. Show me what you got, kid. What? Right now. I have someone ID like you to go up against. I've kept him off missions the last few days, so he'd be ready for just this moment. Your opponent will be. She looked at Kakashi who was reading a red book by the corner. He was giggling and had a hand over his mask. One of her eyebrows twitched. This is no time to be fooling around, Kakashi. Oh, sorry, sorry. The Jonin rubbed the back of his head and pocketed his book. What's up? Tsunade rubbed her forehead. Geez, it's like I am handling children. Oh, yeah. Naruto bumped a fist on his palm. He rummaged through his weapon pouch and took out a green book. He walked over to Kakashi with a giggle and sing-songed. I got something for you, sensei, a little present. HMMN. Kakashi's eyes suddenly widened, and his hands shook like a leaf, no way. Is that, is that really? The first new issue of the Makeout series in three years, Naruto handed the book to the Jonin. pretty boring if you ask me, but I know you like this stuff so. Kakashi clearly fangirled as he opened it gingerly, everybody in the room, except Jiraiya and Naruto, sweat dropped. Tsunade shook her head with a sigh, calm down, Kakashi. The Jonin dropped his expression, closing the book, right, he looked over to Naruto. The blonde blinked back his eyes, HMMN. So I guess, are you my opponent? Well, you're half right, he turned to look at his other student, HMMN, been a long time hasn't it, Sakura? Yes, it has, Sensei, the Chunin nodded, so as to who my opponent will be, it's Naruto and Sakura, the two of you. Ooh. A pair of Anbu jumped from building to building getting farther away from the Hokage's office, Tuyuya followed her guardian, seething in silence, she breathed heavily, her fists clenched tightly, she didn't notice where they were until they stopped and ended up in a clearing, the seventh training ground, it was the place where Tasuki started to train her three weeks ago. Said guardian immediately confronted her, what happened? Tuyuya crossed her arms, scowling behind her mask, it was her, it was the bitch who dropped a ton of trees and almost killed me. Do you have any idea who that is? I already told you, she's the bitch. That person is the Hidden Sand Village's ambassador. So? I don't give a rat's ass what her position is, she almost killed me. That still doesn't give you a reason to disobey orders and do as you wish, the Sand Ninja are our allies. To you you scoffed, easy for you to say, it's not like you were personally wronged by your precious Sand allies. Shut up, Tasuki growled, don't talk as if you know anything about me. Tuyuya went rigid at the sudden chill she felt, she narrowed her eyes, how could I when you don't even tell me a thing about you? She swallowed her retort and waited for the Anbu to continue. If you think you are the only one who was wronged by the hidden sand, you are sadly mistaken, I am sure you haven't forgotten what they did to the leaf village three years ago. What you did, seemed to be a silent message, dropping her hands, Tuyuya looked down with gritted teeth, of course, I remember, I was a part of it. As Lord Orochimaru jumped onto the roof with the third Hokage in tow, the sound four scattered to its four corners. HMMN, finally it's my time, Kitamaru said, we've all been waiting for this, I was so frustrated hiding in that disguise, Sakin replied. Tuyuya put a hand on her hip, you're all sweaty too, so gross. Come on, we're all friends here, right, Jirobo said, do it, Lord Orochimaru commanded. Right, Tuyuya made a snake hand sign. Together with her teammates, they all shouted, Ninja Art, Four Flames Formation. A purple flame barrier covered the roof from all four sides, trapping the third Hokage inside. To Yuya sighed, looking back at the other shinobi, I understand. Tasuki only stared back, do you? Irked, to Yuya replied, I haven't forgotten my place, I won't do anything to the Sand Ambassador, and she meant it, she would swallow her pride as long as it meant she could attain her goal, however. The older Anbu continued her stare as if trying to see for any signs of deceit, the redhead rolled her eyes behind her mask, crossing her arms, it won't happen again, I promise. Silence stood between them, until Tasuki broke it off with a sigh, shifting her gaze to the far off distance, three years ago during the Chunin exams, the proctor for the third round was supposed to be a shinobi called Hayate. Confused, Tuyuya asks, what are you talking about? Telling you my story, I want you to listen. Now this got the redhead's attention, okay, Kabuto Yakushi, you know him, correct? Yeah, for as long as I remember he was with Orochimaru. Tasuki nodded, tensions were running high after learning that Orochimaru was somewhere within the village. Spies were naturally to be expected if Orochimaru could have infiltrated that easily, and soon after, Kabuto was confirmed to be one of them, 
The third Hokage tasked Hayate to track him down, but by the morning after, she clenched her hand. I found his corpse near Kikyo Castle, on his grave, I swore to avenge his death, but by the time I learned who was responsible, it was already too late, the hidden leaf and sand were allies once again. Was it a sand ninja who killed him? Yes, I believe so. To you you frowned, you're not sure. To tell you the truth, I don't know who exactly killed him, but there's one thing I know for certain, his wounds, those slash marks were too finely cut to be done by any blade, it was a wind type of jutsu that did it, which shinobi from the hidden sand were known to master. Tasuki returned her attention back to the redhead, you should know firsthand what it had looked like. To Yuya paled at that memory she tried so hard to forget, you don't have to remind me, I remember it perfectly well, that's why I can't forgive her for what she did to me. Tasuki shook her head, you don't have to forgive, I certainly don't. To Yuya was about to go on another rant, but stopped, there was still a missing piece of the puzzle in the story, this Hayate, he was someone close to you. Yes, she confirmed, Hayate was my lover, to Yuya's eyes widened, what? So you see, I do have a reason to hate the Sand Village, but as they are now our allies, what I feel doesn't matter. It does matter. To Yuya blurted out, if someone precious to me was killed, she clenched her fists, I did do everything in my power to get my revenge. Tasuki shook her head, tempting, but getting revenge isn't worth it. Why not? You said you swore to avenge him, I did, but I can't afford to. Because in the end, I would put aside my desire for revenge all for the sake of peace and stability of the village, that's what it means to be a shinobi. Tasuki walked a few feet back, drawing her sword, you are a part of this village now, and as a leaf shinobi, you must understand that it is your duty to protect it no matter the cost, now, she pointed her blade at Tiyuya, draw your sword, it's time to start training. Tiyuya closed her eyes and breathed in deeply, letting go of her clenched fist, duty to the village, she drew her sword, shifting into a battle stance, I'd rather choose those who are precious to me than a village that doesn't mean anything to me, I am ready. Ooh. Later in another part of the forest at the third training ground, Jiraiya jumped on a branch and sat down, below his tree standing behind a bush, were Tsunade and Shizune, the three of them watched and waited as Naruto and Sakura faced off against Kakashi, their goal was to get the two bells from Kakashi before sunrise, Jiraiya grinned, now, show us the results of your training, Naruto. Said Jenin made his first move as he threw four shuriken at Kakashi, let's go. The Jonin quickly ducked down as the shuriken passed above him, countering with his own, Naruto jumped upward to avoid being hit, but it was the wrong move as Kakashi threw another set of shuriken at the blonde. Naruto immediately made a hand sign, shadow clone jutsu, he used the shadow clone to pull the original out of harm's way. Impressive, Kakashi commented, which made Jiraiya's grin wider, it was short-lived however as he saw the Jonin dashing towards the blonde. Naruto landed on the ground and made another hand sign, transform. There was a poof of smoke, and the blonde changed into a large shuriken, his shadow clone grabbed the transformed shuriken, but before he could throw it, Kakashi managed to grab a hold of him, stopping his movements. That'll be enough of that, Kakashi said, Jiraiya smirked as he saw another Naruto dash in and point a kanai at Kakashi's back, huh? When the kid transformed, he was actually making another shadow clone, it was the second shadow clone who turned into the shuriken while the original hid and waited for a counterattack. Not bad. Tsunade said, incredible, Shizune complimented. You've matured haven't you? Naruto, Kakashi acknowledged, however, you still have a ways to go, it's obvious, you're as impatient as ever, you attacked before I even had a chance to say start, now, let's do this properly, ready, start. I never dreamed I'd go down cause of this, Kakashi said dejectedly at the green book he was holding, Naruto and Sakura jiggled their newly acquired bells with a giggle, I should've just gone ahead and finished it. Naruto laughed. What are you even wasting your time with that for, it's the most boring book ever. From atop a high branch, Jiraiya pouted and crossed his arms, HMPH, little idiot, but you can't expect a kid to appreciate great literature, people would kill for a copy, it hasn't even been released yet, still, he smirked, that unpredictable move worked in their favor. Yeah, the pervy sage loaned it to me, Naruto continued, but it was such a snooze fest, I didn't make it past page 10, he placed his arms behind his head, so why no? I couldn't have spoiled it for ya. Wah. Kakashi shakily pointed a finger at the blonde, trying to make out a coherent response, but then he slumped down in defeat. Even though Naruto didn't know the ending, we figured just the mention of make out tactics would be enough to freeze you in your tracks, Sakura explained, pretty good strategy, huh? You two have certainly demonstrated some growth, 
Tsunade walked out from behind the bush with Shizun in tow. Oh, milady, the blonde stopped a few feet away from them, Kakashi, is there anything you'd like to say? Well, the Jonin shrugged, they did a great job getting hold of those bells, so. She nodded her head, Naruto and Sakura looked at each other, the blonde dropped his arms and turned back to Kakashi, why? What are you guys talking about? Well, we've been discussing what your status will be in the future, Naruto, Shizun answered. HMMN, he turned back around to them, what our status will be. Naruto Uzumaki, Tsunade called, why yeah, speak up. He stood up straighter, oh yes, ma'am, Sakura Haruno. Milady. The Chunin answered, Tsunade looked between the two and at last Kakashi, you two are a team again, along with your old sensei, from this day on, you'll be team Kakashi. Team Kakashi, Sakura said, that sounds pretty cool, so what'll we be doing then? What's the scoop? Naruto asks. It means we'll be going on all of our missions together, Kakashi answered, you and I will be peers now, Naruto and Sakura turned around to face him, that's the long and the short of it, the days of sensei and student are past, we're leaf shinobi on equal ground, got it? Oh, yeah, 110%. Jiraiya placed a hand on his hip, his smirk growing wider, he's all grown up, his gaze then shifted to his old teammate, watching her as she headed out of the forest. Ooh, the lights were off and only the moon shone down inside the Hokage's office, sitting on her chair, Tsunade took a shot of sake, draining it in one gulp and then pouring herself another, this cycle continued on until one of the windows opened, the blonde groaned and laid her head on the table, what are you even doing here at this hour? I'd figured you'd be peeping on girls right about now. Now we wouldn't want me to be that predictable, now would we? An annoying laugh came from the new person inside the room, Tsunade lifted her head to take a peek and saw Jiraiya smiling down at her, he took a chair from the side and sat down across from her, bringing out a cup under his kimono, he poured himself a drink out of her bottle of sake, so. So, so, now that Team Kakashi is newly reformed and all, how about you tell me what was that about with that redhead earlier this afternoon? What was her name again? Akage, was it? What? You're doing research on troubled teenagers now. She smirked at her joke, when he didn't laugh with her, she frowned with a sigh, sitting up straight, she made a set of hand signs to activate a number of seals hidden inside the room. He drank his sake and looked around, smiling a little. What's with all the secrecy? Is it that serious? I don't want eavesdroppers learning about any of this. Opening a drawer on the left side of the table, she took out another bottle of sake and poured herself another drink. She leaned back on her seat. A few weeks ago, I assigned one of my anbu to oversee Akage and placed her within its ranks. That way, I can keep a close eye on her. He poured himself another drink. I can tell that she's not just your ordinary shinobi for you to be lax about her not following orders, he took another shot, I take it that isn't even her real name. No, it isn't, her real name is Tayuya, and apparently, she's a member of the Uzumaki clan. That made him sit up straight, his eyes widening, what? Are you serious? Why am I only learning of this just now? Believe me, I wanted to, but there were complications, I wasn't too sure if she would be of any use back then. What do you mean? There's a reason why I've only assembled search parties over the land of fire these past few weeks, I am sure you've already heard of this. He nodded, I have, I don't know where you got your information, finding some of our old friends hidden bases is impressive, I've been having a hard time tracking them down myself. I have Tayuya to thank for that, he frowned, are you suggesting there's a connection between the girl and Orochimaru? Unfortunately, yes, she was one of his bodyguards and was one of the shinobi who escorted Sasuke Uchiha out of the village. Tsunade drank her sake, she was also an accomplice with the murder of the third. What? His brow scrunched down, if you know all of that, then why are you even letting her walk freely? Simply because I made a deal with her, in exchange for information, I would pardon all her crimes against the leaf village, she drank another shot of sake, I would still keep her in the village, but I made her choose on whether she would stay as a civilian or become a leaf shinobi, as you saw, she chose the latter. He shook his head, crossing his arms, I still don't understand, you could have gotten all that information from the intelligence division, why integrate her in the leaf village? Is it because she's an Uzumaki? Tsunade sighed, rubbing her forehead, partially, yes, and I did give her to the intelligence division, unfortunately, they can't access her memory. How? She shook her head, I don't know, what about Ibiki? Out of the question too, he narrowed his eyes, why? She shrugged, it's the reason why we've only recently started to search for Orochimaru's hideouts, Ibiki couldn't get any information out of Tayuya because she had been in a coma until just last month. 
Jiraiya closed his eyes and leaned back in his seat, breathing deeply, he opened his eyes and poured himself another drink, are you sure you can at least trust her? Tsunade put down her cup and weaved her fingers together, no. That made Jiraiya bark out a humorless laugh, that's a horrible way to put me at ease. My bad, she chuckled, I can't trust her, not yet at least, that's why she's on probation for now. I see, he heaved a sigh and drank his sake, so what made you change your mind and offered her a deal instead of giving her to Ibiki when she woke up? To Yuya, she has a special type of chakra, special chakra, are you saying that? She nodded, yes, but it's different from that tomboy's adamantine chains, from what I've seen, to Yuya's is more offensive rather than sealing or barrier ninjutsu like Kashina's. He rubbed his chin, so that's why, you want to utilize her jutsu in favor of the leaf village. That's another part of it, what's the main part then? She smiled ruefully, after I learned that she was a member of the Uzumaki clan, I thought about how Naruto could learn more about his mother's clan, I had hoped that Tayuya could teach Naruto about the Uzumaki clan's famed sealing jutsu but. She doesn't know any, he finished, Tsunade nodded, it's a shame, but their entire culture and jutsu are lost, only a few remnants of that clan are still left alive. He crossed his arms, raising a brow, do you think she's telling you the truth? What if she's lying that she doesn't know? It's possible, I've already thought of that scenario, she closed her eyes, but I do have leverage to keep her loyal to the village. Give me one good reason why I should accept your terms, Hokage, then maybe I'll consider your offer. Tsunade sighed and took a seat, narrowing her eyes, her brows softened as she looked outside the window, we have a shinobi here who's a member of the Uzumaki clan, although he's away for the time being on a three-year training trip, he'll probably be back around next month. Who, who is he exactly? I think you've met him before during the recovery mission, his name is Naruto Uzumaki. She only accepted my deal when I told her about Naruto. I can only guess what Shed want with the kid, Jiraiya rubbed his chin, but I doubt Shell get any as he doesn't even know who his parents are, be careful when she learns this. I know, Tsunade nodded, I have one of my Anbu monitoring her movements, and if she ever does anything drastic, then our deal is off, she sighed, I hope it doesn't come to that though. Part of me is hoping that if anyone could change her, I am betting it's Naruto. Jiraiya grinned, it probably won't work as you're the one who's betting. She scowled, you want to take me up on that? He laughed, A, hey, it wouldn't look good on my image if I were to bet against my student, he shook his head with a smile, alright, I trust you on this, but I want to test her out tomorrow if that's alright with you. She shrugged and took another drink, go ahead, I'll tell her guardian to clear out for whatever plans you have tomorrow. Thanks. Tsunade, Jiraiya drank one last time, before standing up and heading out the window, I want to know her true intentions before I leave the rest to Naruto. Ooh, under the gaze of the bright full moon, a silhouetted form looked down at an apartment building, particularly at a closed window just a few meters away, Tayuya sat down on a nearby rooftop while waiting, I wonder if this is even the right place, she raised her hand to look at the item she held, it was a letter she wrote after a whole day of training with Tasuki, she didn't really get a chance to talk with her. I don't even know what he is to me, fellow clan member? She had hoped that the Hokage would introduce the two of them, but with the way she behaved herself earlier, she doubted that Tsunade would even let them meet, at least not for a good while, she frowned, this is stupid, is this even a good idea? Suddenly, the window she was watching opened, and out came Naruto Uzumaki, coughing out dust, she quickly hid behind a nearby water tank, pocketing her letter and peering out to see the blonde inhaling a good amount of fresh air, when he went back inside, she quickly jumped down to the next building, crossing the rooftop and landing on the nearest tree, from this view, she could see him picking up a picture frame and sitting down on his bed, his back facing her. It was her chance, she jumped over to the apartment building and landed with a quiet thud on the platform just outside his window. You see, I finally made it back here, Sasuke, Tayuya heard him say, she took a peek inside and saw him stretching his arms while looking around the room, all right, I guess I'd better clean this up before I turn in, he made a hand sign by crossing both his index and middle fingers together, shadow clone jutsu. Six other Naruto's appeared in a cloud of smoke, the original placed both hands on his hips, alright, you guys, time to clean up, you two will clean this room while two others in the bathroom, me and the rest will handle the one outside, he then pumped his fist, okay, let's go. Right. The shadow clones shout in unison, while the other five Naruto's left the room, the two remaining shadow clones found a broom inside a narrow closet, one shadow clone went to sweep the floor while the other picked up a rag to wipe the dust and cobwebs from the furniture, Tayuya's eyes softened while watching the ordinary scene, shadow clone, huh, 
she remembered that he did have that jutsu in his arsenal. Naruto made a shadow clone and formed something in his hand while his two teammates intercepted Saken, the sound ninja blasted them away with a series of quick and strong punches, but his opponents suddenly poofed out in a cloud of smoke, Naruto went in for a counterattack, Rasengan. Tuyuya backed away and hid behind the wall, wrenching off her mask, she screwed her eyes shut as a flood of memories haunted her mind, stop it, they're all gone, and you're still alive, she grabbed a tight hold of her shaking hand, gritting her teeth and breathing in deeply and out, she looked at the moonlit sky above, and eventually, her nerves calmed down. Hooking her mask on her hip, she peeked back inside and saw that the shadow clones were just finishing, a few minutes later, they exited the room. Tuyuya jumped inside and walked over to the bedside drawer where the picture frame Naruto was looking at earlier sat. It was a photo of him and his team, Kakashi of the Sharingan, Sakura, and, Sasuke Uchiha. She had mixed feelings about what she'd done and wondered if Naruto would even accept her if he ever knew who she truly was, sighing, she took out the letter inside her pocket and placed it beside the picture frame, her eyes shifted again to the photo, and a mirthless chuckle escaped her lips, now that I've thought about it, I've never owned a photo of myself before. Placing a hand on her hips, she looked at the orange alarm clock twice the size of her fist beside the picture frame. Taking a step back, she looked around the room, it was all right for someone who lived all by himself, cozy even. It was so much more than what Shed had, she noticed a small closet on the side and found herself getting curious, carefully opening it, she saw a few clothes inside that seemed too small on him now, to her distaste, most of them were the color of orange, what piqued her interest though was a cute little black and white nightcap, picking it up, she patted off the dust and placed it on her head. It fit perfectly, a small smile lit up her face, she was jolted back to reality, however, when she heard the sound of footsteps coming closer, her eyes widened, and she quickly scrambled towards the open window, remembering at the last second that she was still wearing the blonde's stupidly cute hat, she quickly threw it on the bed, and just as she crouched outside the window, she heard the door opening and closing, followed by footsteps. Taking a peek, she looked at the boy with wonder, seeing him again after two years, Naruto Uzumaki didn't look like had changed a whole lot, except for getting taller, she remembered being the same height as him, now he was a full head taller than her, although, he still looked like that blonde orange shit she saw at the Chunin exams and at her final mission as a sound shinobi. Suddenly, Naruto unzipped his jacket, tossing it on the floor together with his mesh armor, Tuyuya's eyes widened, and her mouth slightly hung agape, heat crept up her cheeks as she got a full view of his naked back, to make matters worse, he was about to take off his pants too, she shut her eyes, and her hands flew up to cover her face, she tried to back away, but her foot accidentally slipped on the platform, making noise, shit. Ooh. Naruto suddenly heard a noise coming from outside the window, zipping up his pants, he went to check it out, but when he searched the vicinity, he saw nothing there, a bead of sweat slipped down his temple, and a worried look painted his face, there's no ghost around here, is there? He chuckled mechanically, right, no ghost, ghosts aren't real, why no? Putting on a black shirt, he took off his orange pants, leaving him in a pair of green shorts, soon, he noticed his old nightcap sitting on top of the bed, although he couldn't remember taking it out of the closet, he shrugged off the nagging feeling, fitting the cap snuggly on his head. When he finally sat down on the bed ready for sleep, he noticed a piece of neatly folded paper on top of his bedside drawer, reaching for it, he opened it up and read what it said. Come meet me at the third training ground tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the morning. Naruto tilted his head to the side, huh? Naruto yawned, stretching his arms above his head as he walked down the street, he was supposed to meet up with Sakura and Kakashi Sensei, so they could get their first mission as Team Kakashi at the mission assignment desk within the academy, rubbing the sleep from his eyes, he looked at the letter he received last night, he was really curious who this mysterious person might be, and it was the reason why he was still kinda sleepy. Come meet me at the third training ground tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the morning. It sounded like somebody wanted to challenge him to a fight, Naruto stopped in his tracks, closing his eyes and placing a hand on his chin, now who the heck does that sound like? Konohamaru. Probably, but it's weird cause hell usually ambush me rather than send me a letter, wait, he opened his eyes and bopped a fist on his open palm, oh. What about bushy brow? Or maybe even Neji? His brows then scrunched down as he crossed his arms, but that's not right too cause it's not like they know I am back in the village yet and I've only seen Sakura and Shikamaru. Oh, hey, Naruto, somebody called him from behind. Turning around, the blonde saw his unusually early sensei, hey, Kakashi sensei, what are you doing out here so early in the morning? The Jonin tilted his head to the side, 
What are you talking about? I am always this early. Naruto stuck out his tongue, his eyes becoming straight lines. No, you're not, stop joking, sensei, you're never early, you running late is the same as the fact that I love ramen. A blustery wind passed by, and Kakashi suddenly staggered as if he got hit by multiple arrows with words like late, tardy, not on time, unpunctual, etc. The blonde sweat dropped at that, I can't believe the day has finally come when one of my cute little students would think so little of me, Kakashi mumbled, slumping down in defeat as if a heavy weight was dropped on his back. Naruto jolted and raised both hands in a calming gesture, um h hey, Kakashi sensei, I think you're okay, g great even, you're crazy cool too, why no, and uh, um. The jonin heaved a sigh, you don't need to heal my wounded pride Naruto, I, hmmn. Stopping his drama, the jonin picked up a piece of paper lying on the ground, did you drop this? The blonde's eyes widened, oh. He glanced at his now empty hand, yeah, I guess I did, taking it from his sensei, he unfolded the paper to make sure that it was his. It was, whatcha got there? Kakashi acts, leaning in. Naruto glanced at him, before looking back at the letter, oh, this is a, he scratched the top of his head, it's a letter from someone, actually, I am not really sure what to make of it. Why don't I take a look? Oh, okay, he handed it over, I am kinda thinking it's a challenge of sorts or something, or maybe it's from somebody I owe, although I don't remember owing someone. Come meet me at the third training ground tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the morning, Kakashi read, HMMN. So uh, what do you think it is? The Jonin looked at it one last time, before giving it back to his student, well, it seems to me, Naruto, that it means what it says it means. The blonde's eyebrow twitched, that doesn't answer anything, is it a challenger, or is it somebody I owe? Which is it? Kakashi shook his head, eyes smiling, neither, and if I am correct, and this is what I think it is, then I am happy to inform you that you have a secret admirer. Naruto's eyes widened, and his mouth gaped like a fish, wh wa? I never thought I'd see this day so fast, Kakashi wiped away an imaginary tear and placed a hand on the blonde's shoulder, but you've definitely grown up into a fine young man. Naruto took a step back, wa. I I don't get it, secret admirer? It's a love letter, Naruto, the blonde felt his cheeks heating up, he shook his head, w wait. How are you even sure? Simple, rummaging through his weapons pouch, Kakashi took out a familiar orange book. Naruto blinked back his eyes and exclaimed, that's the pervy sage's pervy book. Kakashi only nodded, flipping through it, he stopped at a page and showed it to the blonde, pointing at a particular paragraph, see. This is where the main character receives a love letter from the heroine, his main love interest, he pointed at another part of the book, the construction of your love letter is also very similar to the love letter that the main character receives, also. Naruto turned redder and redder as the jonin continued his explanation, the thought of someone liking him remotely romantic was surreal, it had always been him who was looking at girls he was attracted to, he gulped as a certain pink-haired kunoichi came to mind, the girl had been crushing on sometime during their academy days, is it possible that Sakura sent me this letter? He smiled, but soon, it turned into a frown, no, Sakura's in love with Sasuke, she has always been looking at Sasuke, he read the letter again and sighed, Kakashi sensei, do you think I should even go? The jonin placed a hand on his chin, well, it would be rude if you didn't. Naruto sighed again and pocketed the piece of paper, oh, okay, patting his cheeks, he gave a grin, welp, wish me luck then. Naruto arrived at the third training ground, the place where he and Sakura were tested just yesterday, what he saw there made his eyes flash in recognition, crouched on top of the farthest stump was a girl looking up at the sky, a gentle breeze brushed through her long red locks, it was the Anbu girl from yesterday, he was about to call out to her when she suddenly stiffened and then turned around to face him as if she already knew he was there. Hey. Hi there, uh, he went to open his mouth to say something more, but nothing came as he knew he was forgetting a little important detail. Um, what's your name again? The redhead's posture relaxed a bit, she hopped off the stump and landed on the grassy ground, Tiyuya, my name is Tiyuya. Naruto scrunched down his brows and crossed his arms, really? I am pretty sure it's not that, I remember it was awesome something, Ayaka. It's Tiyuya, she cut off, placing a hand on her hip, trust me, I am pretty sure I would know my own name, Naruto. Huh? How do you know my name, I heard it from yesterday. Oh. Yeah, Naruto rubbed the back of his neck while Tiyuya grabbed her arm, so uh, I, both of them said at the same time, she chuckled softly while he grinned, putting his arms behind his head. 
It's nice to finally meet you. Officially that is, to Yuya said. Oh. Nice to meet you too. Naruto replied. Another bout of awkward silence permeated the air between them. He shifted his weight and thought of a good conversation starter since the redhead wasn't making any. What do you say when you're meeting a new person? Hey. Hello. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. But she already knows that. Also. She's a girl. And I don't really know what girls like. Hey. What does Sakura like? I am Sakura Haruno. What I like. Uh. I mean the person I like is. Uh. My hobby is uh. My dream for the future is. Naruto made a face. Do all girls like cool guys like Sasuke? He crossed his arms. Nah, grandma likes drinking and gambling. Then again, maybe she's an exception because she's really old. His mind then drifted to a conversation he had with the pervy sage. Listen here, kid, when talking to a woman, you need to compliment her first. Either her physical appearance or an attractive personality she has, got it. Naruto blinked and observed to Yuya's figure. She was looking away, and he couldn't really see her face as it was concealed by her anbu mask. He also didn't know much about her personality except for the fiasco yesterday when she provoked Gara's sister. When you've found her most defining characteristic, that's when you go in for the strike. Jiraiya's face turned leery, and that was when Naruto zoned out his master's advice. So what's her most defining trait then? His eyes immediately landed on red. Ooh. Tiyuya couldn't meet Naruto in the eyes as whenever she looked at him. Her thoughts drifted to last night when she saw him stripping until he was half naked. It was also more embarrassing when Tasuki caught her accidentally peeping, the judgmental look the older Anbu gave her when they got back at their apartment was quite frustrating and unnecessary. Sighing mentally, Tiyuya forced her eyes to meet the blondes, heat crept up her cheeks for many other reasons, but the main one was the fact that she had requested this meeting, only for her mind to go blank. Not knowing what to even say, it's not like I know how to speak to guys, well, I do know how, but it's to talk back and insult them which is really so much easier. I need to play nice though, so head at least like me enough not to attack, she closed her eyes and breathed in deeply, I want to know what he knows about our shared clan, even if it's just a little, it might be a clue to my past, she opened her eyes, her mouth forming a question, but the blonde beat her to it. You have pretty red hair, why no? Naruto suddenly blurted out, her eyes widened, she took a step back and stuttered, wh what? I, she could see he was blushing as well. I just think that your hair is really pretty and nice to look at. My hair. She suddenly realized she was unconsciously combing through it. She stopped that at once and crossed her arms. Thanks, I guess, she replied, scanning him from head to toe. You're taller than the last time I saw you. He scratched his cheek. Really? I don't feel any different from yesterday. She blinked back her eyes. Oh, right. He doesn't know I was the sound shinobi who, and I need for it to stay that way. She straightened her back and placed a hand on her hip. Listen, I need to talk to you about something. He nodded and took out a piece of paper from inside his pocket. I am guessing you're the one that left this letter to me last night. Yes, I did, she answered, and his face faltered for a second, irking her for some reason. Naruto sheepishly rubbed the back of his neck, to Yuya, right. I am really flattered and all, but I just can't accept your feelings because there's somebody else that I still like. Her mouth hung agape. Huh. Wah. The blonde continued, I do understand how you feel, the girl I like likes somebody else too, but I am sorry, he bowed his head, I hope you understand. She tried to process what he had just said, but the end result was only a gigantic error, what the hell are you talking about? I don't care whichever girl you like. Wait, you don't. He pointed at the note in his hand, isn't this a love letter that you sent me? To Yuya stumbled comically, what? She couldn't believe what she was hearing, how the hell did a simple meet-up letter transform into a damn love letter? She stared at his gaping face as he looked back between her and the letter, his face paled. Naruto quickly stepped back, crumpling the letter in his hand and rubbing the back of his head, oh, sorry, sorry, my bad, his shoulders stiffened, and his eyes shut with a wince, it was as if he was preparing for an incoming attack or something. Does he think ID hit him? The thought was very puzzling, the only people Shed liked to beat up were her enemies, she glared at him. Not that hell see it anyway. Until he relaxed a bit, their eyes met, and she looked away, placing a hand on her hip, she muttered an, idiot, before disappearing. Ooh. Naruto stared wide-eyed as Tuyuya vanished in a leafy wind, he didn't quite understand what had happened. Just that they had a misunderstanding and that he might have upset her. So, she's not my secret admirer then, he didn't know what to feel about that. 
His thoughts were broken when he suddenly heard his name being called, Naruto. Turning around, he sees Sakura waving at him. He raises a hand to say hello, but as the chunin came closer, he noticed the deep frown marring her face. He put both hands in a calming gesture. H hey, Sakura chan, what's up? When the chunin reached him, she made a quick jab to his gut, making him wince as he clutched his stomach. Ah, uh, why? Sakura put both her hands on her hips. Idiot, I've been looking everywhere for you. I expected Kakashi Sensei to be late, but not you. She sighed. Listen, Lady Tsunade is expecting us in her office, not at the academy, and you don't want to make her wait. Trust me, she shivered as a haunted look passed by her face, making the blonde gulp. It doesn't help that she seems grumpier than usual too. Huh. What's that you're holding? Naruto followed his teammate's gaze to the balled up piece of paper on his hand. It was the meet-up letter to you you gave him. Oh, this is, the blonde blushed as he remembered the misunderstanding they had. I can't believe Kakashi Sensei tricked me. I embarrassed myself in front of a girl. And what the heck do I even tell Sakura? The Chunin crossed her arms, raising an eyebrow. Is that the reason why you're late? He raised both hands. I I can explain. It's fine. She sighed. Let's just go. Better not keep Lady Tsunade waiting. Yeah, gotcha. Naruto sighed in relief when his teammate didn't pry any further. He didn't feel like explaining about what had happened earlier, nor did he want her to start laughing at his embarrassment. Together, they walked back to the village in a comfortable silence. His thoughts wander back to Tayuya. I wonder what she wanted to tell me anyway. He placed the balled up letter inside his pocket. Secret admirer. Huh. I knew it was a joke. Well, it's my fault for listening to Kakashi Sensei. I mean, now that I think about it, I don't think I ever saw him with someone that way. He sighed, which made Sakura look at him questioningly. He shook his head and just smiled that it was nothing. The Chunin narrowed her eyes for a bit, but then shrugged her shoulders, looking back on ahead. Naruto put his hands inside his pockets as he took a quick glance at his teammate then up at the bright blue sky. I don't think Sakura will ever look at me that way, the way she looks at Sasuke, I don't know anyone in the village who will, but, I guess it's kinda a relief I don't have to worry about those things yet, I still have a promise to keep, a strong but gentle breeze surrounds them, making the grass and leaves dance with the wind, the blonde closed his eyes at the cool air, and his mind flashed to red strands swaying gently like it was underwater, she does have pretty hair. Ooh, Tayuya sat by her lonesome at the seventh training ground, looking at her reflection on the still surface of the nearby lake, she traced the side of her mask before taking it off to see tired brown eyes staring back, idiot, she sighed and then frowned when she noticed herself unconsciously playing with her hair. She put a stop to that immediately. Gah, why did I leave? I didn't. I didn't even get the chance to talk to him properly, she hugged her knees to her chest, resting her head on it, why the hell did he even say that? She fingered one lock of hair in front of her face, heat crept up her cheeks in embarrassment, he thinks my hair is. Her body went rigid at an unfamiliar presence she felt from behind, carefully, she stood up and turned to face the intruder, there, a few feet away, stood a man in a grey cloak, his entire head was covered in white bandages, all except for a pair of dark steely eyes, he didn't approach her or anything, just stood there unmoving, she didn't back down either, waiting for the mon's next move. I didn't think you'd still be alive, he spoke. To Yuya narrowed her eyes, but kept her silence. You're her, right? The man asked, head tilted slightly, to Yuya of the North Gate, if I am not mistaken. She held her breath, then replied, who asked? Me. I am a humble shinobi in the service of my great master, his eyes never blinked, Lord Orochimaru. Her eyes widened, it couldn't be, how did they even find me? I was basically dead to the world a month ago. Does he know I've defected? Does Lord Orochimaru know? Wait, okay, calm down, I need to stay calm and be careful about this, she forced her body to relax then smirked at the man, I see, did Lord Orochimaru send you here to this village? Was it to find and kill the one who ratted out his secrets? She thought bitterly. Yes, Lord Orochimaru sent me here. What for? The man scratched his bandaged cheek. To spy, of course, he narrowed his eyes. The better question is, what are you doing in a place like this? Last I heard, all members of the Sound 4 were eliminated, yet I find one still breathing. HMMN, his eyes crinkled as he gestured at her form, and dressed up as a leaf anbu, I see. Alarm bells rang loud and clear inside Tuyuya's mind. The mon's dark cold eyes locked onto hers, you probably would know all about this mole I am talking about, yeah. Shit. 
heart hammering wildly inside her chest. Tiyuya glared back. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, so piss off, asshole. He gave a bored look. Really now? Do I have to spell it out for you? When he got no reply, he shrugged. Only someone within Lord Orochimaru's inner circle could have betrayed his secrets, and seeing how you're here and alive well, he pointed a finger directly at her. You know, Tiyuya. Son of a... With gritted teeth, she drew her sword in a flash, already siphoning out chakra to wrap around the blade's sharp edge, she was ready to strike and silence him when all of a sudden, she faltered in her steps, her surroundings shifted like waves in a desert, impairing her balance and momentum, her eyes widened, Genjutsu. So hasty, he snickered and placed a finger by his mouth, don't worry, I want snitch. Wh what? At her confused expression, he laughed out loud, cold eyes morphing into a sickly glee, be a good little girl for me, and I want tell Lord Orochimaru that you willingly betrayed him. Tiyuya scowled, dispelling the genjutsu with a wave of her hand, not just an asshole, but you're a creep too, I don't know what game you're playing at, but I sure as hell want participate. Oh? I bet you like my offer, the redhead scoffed, I already accepted an offer, just not from you, she thought but replied, try me. Even with his mostly covered face, the mon's expression seemed to smile, he spread out his arms as if welcoming her in an embrace, instead of being the hidden leaf's mole, be ours. Whatever they have offered you is nothing compared to what Lord Orochimaru could give you. He stretched a welcoming hand towards her, you remember, right? The powerful feeling he gave to those had chosen. At his words, memories of the past flashed before her eyes. A guard was whimpering as he cradled his broken fingers. Tiyuya looked down at her hands, glowing marks crawling up the skin. Orochimaru's voice echoed inside her head, I think it's time for you to taste what power truly is. A devilish smile creeped up the redhead's lips, she laughed in joyous elation. Give us the village's secrets. The man continued on, join Lord Orochimaru's side once more. You are a bright child for your age, you'll make a fine shinobi if brought properly. What did you say? Me? Eh, a shinobi. His piercing golden eyes gleamed in contrast to the dark candlelit room. I saw what you did, doing advanced genjutsu on multiple humans, you've piqued my interest, I am curious, who taught you that jutsu? I I did, actually, his eyes flashed again, but it was gone in an instant, a brilliant child indeed. Tiyuya looked down on the floor, avoiding his gaze, when she looked up, her downcast eyes were replaced with steely determination, oh Orochimaru, could I, will you, will you make me into a powerful shinobi? What do you say? Tiyuya looked back at the man before her, hand still outstretched in welcome, what do I say? My choice, she smiled melancholy, to tell you the truth. If you had found me two and a half years ago, I would have accepted with little to no hesitation. Even if she told me not to go back, I think I still would have returned, she touched the back of her neck, her curse mark, the thing that bound her forever to him, I owe Lord Orochimaru a lot, and in a way, I owe him my life, she confessed, it was power that drove me to follow him in the first place, without it, I wouldn't have the means to serve my justice, but, she frowned, hand sliding off her neck and back to her side, her eyes steeled, but it's too late. The mon's expression darkened, his offered hand faltering, I am sure Lord Orochimaru will pardon. She scoffed at that, smirking, do you really believe that? You're delusional if you think Orochimaru will tolerate failure, if Kimimaro was still alive, he would have had your head for even suggesting that. Did you really fail though? He insisted. Master Sasuke arrived intact at Lord Orochimaru's side. All the leaf brats survived while I was the only one of the sound four to even make it out alive, she shook her head, doesn't scream like a victory to me. The man finally dropped his arm, so that's your answer then. I guess so, tch, what a shame, she shrugged, it sure is. Lord Orochimaru will have your head for this. No, her eyes darkened, Orochimaru won't know any damn thing about this, not if I kill you right here. She dashed forward, chakra blade at the ready. The man quickly performed a bunch of hand signs, fingers curled, he placed them by his mouth, and a large area of fire shot out towards her. Thinking quickly, Tiyuya made a ram, snake, and tiger hand sign, producing four clones in front of her. All four clones ran forward while the real Tiyuya weaved a simple genjutsu to mask her presence as she circled around. The flames reached all the clones, but because they were merely an illusion, the attack went right past them the clones flickering out of existence. Clone Jutsu, huh, he took a defensive stance, drawing two kanai and looking warily around the area. Tiyuya made two more clones, as well as adding another genjutsu, 
Taking out two kanai, she threw it right between the clones straight to her intended target. Her mirror images doing the same thing, with this distraction, she ran towards his blind spot. The man saw the attack and deflected both real kanai to the side. The fake ones phasing right through his body, he threw a kanai at the one on the left, the clone flickered out. Ah, so it's that one then. The remaining clone continued its charge while Tuyuya closed in the distance from the rear, sword ready at striking distance. She swung down her blade. Only instead of soft flesh, it struck cold steel, her opponent had turned around at the last second, blocking her strike, her clone phased past both of them. His eyes crinkled, I see you, nausea formed in the pit of her stomach, her heart beating rapidly, creep. Tuyuya disengaged, jumping back a few feet away while throwing another kanai. He threw one right back, cancelling both attacks, nice try, sweetcakes, but that won't work on me. Undeterred, she weaved another genjutsu, but the man simply dispelled it. Your genjutsu is weak, I heard you were good at it, where's your? He mimicked playing a flute with his hands. None of your business, asshole. She snarled and charged at him, swinging her blade, but with every single strike, he dodged every one, she crouched down low for a leg sweep, which he evaded by jumping back, Tiyuya smirked as she quickly swiped a fallen kanai nearby and threw it at him while he was still in the air. She almost got a hit, but the man bent his neck at the last second, missing his head by an inch. Whoa! That was close! You almost got me there, landing on his feet, he immediately sprinted after her. Here he comes! Tiyuya stood quickly, raising her arms to guard against the first punch, but the second one hit her in the gut, followed by a spinning kick to the side, she blocked the kick, although just barely, cartwheeling through the motion to minimize the damage and to keep her distance away, I am at a disadvantage fighting head on, I gotta keep my distance until. Tiyuya tried to move, but her feet felt like a ton of weight, her eyes widened as she looked down below, the ground she stood on was coated in this thick mud, soon after, it turned rock solid until she couldn't move anymore. Shit. When did he, it's no use, this earth-style jutsu ensnares anyone who lands on it, he pointed at her, give it up. Once trapped, there's zero chance of escaping. You think I give a damn? Tiyuya impulsively slashed at the mud with a charged chakra blade. Seconds ticked. Everything seemed to slow down, the redhead blinked, there was a gash on the solid mud formation from her strike, so much for being unescapable, she blinked again and turned her attention back to her opponent who threw a kanai right at her, changing the direction of her sword, she slashed upward parrying the attack away from the area, at the same time, she drew out another kanai, and threw it. The mon's eyes widened, he looked behind him, and few ways away, was a kanai embedded in the ground. It missed, he turned his attention back to the girl, you missed. Tiyuya tilted her head, did I? She made a half-handed ram sign. The air shifted as if charged with an unknown energy, four surrounding kanai embedded at different points lit up, and in the middle of it all was the cloaked man. What? Ninja art. Pyramidal prison. All four points connected with one another, encasing her opponent in a four-meter pyramid barrier. Barrier ninjutsu, huh, he said, observing his prison. I know it's sloppy, Tiyuya shrugged nonchalantly, the base isn't even a perfect square, but what else can you do? How? Tiyuya smirked with a smug satisfaction. Why don't you look over there? She pointed at one of the four corners of the pyramid, the air around the four kanai shifted, revealing ceiling tags wrapped around the handle. His eyes widened, so from the very beginning, this was your plan all along. And you fell right into my trap like the little rat you are, she sneered, I took a page from my previous battle, although I despise what had happened, there's one thing I realized when fighting that dirty conniving weasel. A kanai with a paper bomb attached landed on a tree a few meters away. It exploded. The redhead jumped away, landing on a branch from behind, she sent one of her rage orgs to sweep the area where the attack came from while the other two searched from above and below. Another kanai shot out from the trees, she quickly had Slash, the rage ogre with the claw-like weapon, to guard her against the attack, she turned her attention to the direction where it came from and maneuvered Kickass, the one covered in bandages, to hunt in that area. He wasn't there, another kanai shot out, this one coming from above. She manipulated Slash to move its arm to shield her from the projectile, four more appeared, yet every single one was intercepted, a thud could be heard from behind, and she quickly turned around and saw the weasel crouching down on a branch, on instinct, she sent all her rage ogres to go in for the kill. A ball with the character light written on it fell down to her level. Her eyes widened, it flashed a blinding light. Tuyuya covered her eyes as she tried to see through the light, 
Her opponent's shadow reached out and touched all three of her rage ogre's shadows, taking complete control over them. Shikamaru smirked, shadow possession jutsu complete. To Yuya smirked, he planned every one of his attacks just to trap me, everything was calculated to the letter, she laughed, what did you say before? That my genjutsu is weak? Well, look at how you just got played by this weak ass genjutsu. His eyes narrowed, tch, I can admit, I was too careless, however, every barrier ninjutsu, no matter how strong, always has a weakness. Like a blur, his hands quickly formed a bunch of hand signs. To Yuya blew a one-toned whistle, the man suddenly seized up, his hands, mid-snake hand sign, trembled, his legs buckled, and he collapsed on his knees, wh what the, my body, he tried getting up but failed, it won't respond properly. The redhead's smirk widened, she continued her tune. He glared up at her, wh what have you done to me? To Yuya stopped whistling and met his gaze, you feel sluggish, don't you? Tired? Downright exhausted? Yeah, that's what I suggested you to feel, she tapped her ear, one of the most dangerous forms of genjutsu are the ones that target the auditory senses, it's quite easy to fall for it, hard to break out of it, especially if you keep falling for it over and over again. I don't understand, without your flute. To Yuya rolled her eyes, do you honestly believe I am that incompetent without my flute? If I had it right now, you would have been on the ground, gasping and writhing in pain, and it would have made things a whole lot easier, sure. Genjutsu affecting the auditory senses are deemed the most dangerous, but without a proper medium, it's just as easy to break out of it as any normal genjutsu, if he calls out my bluff. The man shook his head, looks like I underestimated you, no matter, you can't keep up your genjutsu forever, sooner or later, you'll run out of chakra, and I think this kind of genjutsu isn't as normally strong as you'd like if you had done it instead with your flute, am I right? TCH, so much for the bluff, but whatever, to Yuya took out a piece of paper with characters written on it, as well as one last kanai on her person, she attached them together and gave the paper a tap, sending her chakra into it. It activated with a glow, she threw the kanai right before the barrier, there, that should cancel the build up of chakra from anyone nearby, whatever you were planning on doing earlier is now void, and I don't have to keep up my genjutsu over you. The man slowly sat up properly, that ceiling tag, I don't think I recognize it anywhere. To Yuya raised a brow, of course you want, I made it myself, I don't normally use this in battle as it only covers a short distance anyway, no, I use it cause of, she trailed off, her eyes darkening, memories resurfaced, and she immediately stamped and crushed them down into the deepest recess of her mind, she scowled, forget it, I know I said I'd kill you, but I think it's better if we get some information out of your perverted head. He laughed at that, shaking his head, you forget, we're currently at a stalemate, both of us can't do anything to each other, so what are you gonna do now? To Yuya looked down at the earth jutsu trapping her feet, she poked it with her sword, she narrowed her eyes, he's right, it's damn near unbreakable at this point, and I can't siphon any chakra to my blade cause of my ceiling tag, she sighed, pointing her blade towards him, you just stay right there, an ambu should be coming soon, she shifted her gaze to nowhere in particular, where the hell are you, Tasuki? I am impressed, the man said, bringing the redhead's attention back to him, you got me, he faced her, eyes closed as if he was grinning, you passed. She frowned, huh? What are you? The man before her poofed up in smoke, leaving no trace behind. What? To Yuya searched around the area, but he was nowhere to be found, no way, it can't. The solid mud formation around her feet crumbled, freeing her from entrapment. Stepping out of it, to Yuya was at a loss, I don't understand, she went to the barrier and dispelled the ceiling tag, closing her eyes, she expanded her sensory perception, she tried to search for the mons chakra. There was nothing, nobody was nearby except for her. Damn it. To Yuya yelled, slashing her blade at nothing, she placed a hand over her face. Brows furrowed, was he a shadow clone all along? It's the only explanation I can think of. I don't know how or when, but. Akage. To Yuya turned around and saw her purple haired guardian approaching, she felt herself relax. Nerves calming down, Tasuki's here, it's going to be fine, waving, she closed the distance between them, Tasuki. There you are. Listen, there's something I have to tell you. The older Anbu raised her hand, I know, and I am sorry. The redhead stopped, a bad feeling rising within, what do you mean? Sorry. It was all a test, ooh. Yugo went on and explained what had actually happened, to Yuya's fight with the unknown assailant was a test by Master Jiraiya to prove her loyalty to the hidden leaf village and to see her capabilities as a shinobi, she passed with flying colors, going on with a fight with one of the Sanin, even if it was just a shadow clone 
was a feat in itself, however, no matter what Yugo said, there was no escaping the betrayed look the redhead gave her. You all played me for a fool, to Yuya gritted her teeth, breathing heavily, she clenched her hands tightly, glaring at the ground, so this is the kind of people you have here, I see it's no different than the sound village, it's all the same, shinobi are just tools to be used after all. Yugo sighed softly, I knew this was going to happen, and of course it falls to me to handle this situation carefully, listen, to Yuya. No. Screw you. The Anbu's eyes widened at what she saw, the girl was in no way crying, but her eyes were glassy. Her expression more hurt than angry, Yugao's eyes softened, I apologize for deceiving you, I truly am, she thought, before straightening her shoulders, but you have to understand the position you are currently in, you were a subordinate to Orochimaru, a criminal and a traitor to the Hidden Leaf, the Hokage may have pardoned all your crimes, but that doesn't mean others won't hold that against you. The redhead defiantly lifted her chin, so what? Am I supposed to just accept that for the rest of my life it'll be treated like an outcast? I've already held my end of the bargain, I betrayed my former master and gave you everything that I know of, I don't need others to forgive what I've done, they can stay angry for all I care, what I don't need is for them to keep fucking with me. Yugo shook her head, it's not that simple, to Yuya scoffed, head turning away and shaking slightly, whatever, let's just, she gestured to nowhere in particular, shoulders slumping down, I am tired. Yugo stared at her, before sighing, all right, ooh. Kakashi scanned over the details of his team's upcoming mission, thanks to their intel, courtesy of a certain redhead. Another one of Orochimaru's hideouts was unearthed somewhere in the vast desert of the Land of Wind, the Hidden Sand Village had requested their assistance, but, shinobi skilled in sensory ninjutsu, while I have abilities in that department, I was never really a master. He placed the mission assignment down on a desk filled with towers of paper, sitting behind it was the Lady Hokage, so I am guessing there are no better qualified than my team right now. Tsunade nodded, I am expecting some of our sensor units to return, in a few days maybe, but no definitive date, others like Kurenai's team I've recently sent out as well, I still have some assigned here in the village, but I can't really leave it completely unguarded, she leaned back on her seat, so the next best bet as you have guessed is the recently reformed team Kakashi. The John and I smiled, placing his hands inside his pockets, and quite timely I must say. Very, else I wouldn't have had a choice but to send them instead, she muttered under her breath. Ah, you mean Yugo and her little firecracker, the blonde raised an eyebrow, firecracker? Kakashi chuckled, shaking his head, oh nothing, just a former mentor and his protege sharing their woes about life. Speaking about woes, Tsunade looked over her tower upon towers of paperwork, she pinched the bridge of her nose, I could definitely use a bottle right now. The dark-haired medical nin nearby sighed, oh, Lady Tsunade. Relax, Shizun, I was just kidding, she waved her off, besides, I do it after hours anyways. The apprentice could only sigh again, a knock on the door shifted their attention. Enter, Tsunade said, the door opened, bringing in the rest of team Kakashi inside. Sakura bowed at her master, we're here, milady. Eh? The chunin stared at the copy ninja in surprise, you're already here, Kakashi sensei. I am amazed you're on time for once. You too. You guys really expected me to be late, huh? The Jonin huffed out a sigh, shoulders slumped and feeling tired already. Oh the woes of life, HMMN. It was then he noticed that Naruto was staring at him with this disappointed frown on his face. He sweat dropped and then I smiled. Hey. What's wrong, Naruto? You were totally wrong, Sensei. Super way off, the blonde deadpanned. I am never taking your advice about that stuff ever again. Kakashi was suddenly hit by an imaginary lightning bolt making him drop down to his hands and knees defeated. Ooh. They've located the last hideout in the land of wind from our intel, your mission is to assist the case cage in that regard, are there any questions? Tsunade asks. Naruto crossed his arms, head slightly tilted, um, about Orochimaru's hideouts, how did you know all about this, granny? Even pervy sage says it's hard to just find one. It was Sakura who answered for her, we have a source under our protection, Naruto. They're the ones who gave us the info we needed to track down and raid his scattered bases. It is as Sakura said, the blonde confirmed, the more hideouts we secure, the less power Orochimaru has over the land of fire and wind, if there are even any hints we can find on his whereabouts, it's a step closer we have to finding them, she smirked, right, Naruto. Naruto stood up straighter, right, I never go back on my word, it'll bring Sasuke back, believe it. Naruto, Sakura softly said, she then straightened her shoulders, pumping a fist, don't forget, 
I'll be there with you too, we're gonna save Sasuke together. Yeah. Well be off now then, Lady Hokage, Kakashi I smiled. Tsunade nodded, then, good luck on your first mission as Team Kakashi. Naruto grinned, saluting, roger that. The sound of paper shifting around the desk could be heard as Tsunade placed another document aside, taking another one, she read it disinterestedly before sealing it with a stamp of approval and then setting it aside. Repeat. It went on for a while until she leaned back on her chair with a tired groan, closing her eyes, I am not delusional when I say these damn papers never end. Shizun chuckled, here you are, milady. The blonde opened an eye to see her apprentice placing down a hot cup of tea on the remaining free space on her desk. Exhaling another breath, Tsunade sat back up properly and took it gently in her hands, thanks, Shizun. She was about to take a sip when her apprentice suddenly yelped as the nearest window between them opened, making the blonde almost spill the hot drink on herself. Hey, there. A tick mark pulsed on her forehead, I know that voice anywhere, you know you could have at least knocked and used the door on the way in, Jiraiya. Now where's the fun in that? The toad sage laughed heartily as he jumped down inside. She sighed again for the third time, grumbling under her breath about her longtime teammate. Master Jiraiya, Shizun handed him a cup of tea. He accepted, thank you, my dear, smiling with a nod, her apprentice turned to face her, anyways, I'll be taking those finished documents now, milady, and send them in, she took out a large scroll and sealed all approved documents inside, turning to the small creature behind her, she said, Come now, Taunton. Oink, oink, as her apprentice and pet pig left the room, Tsunade activated the seals around the room. Once done, she leaned back on her seat and faced her fellow Sanin. So, what's the verdict? Jiraiya smiled, straight to business as usual. Taking off the books from a nearby stool, he placed them on her desk. Sitting down, he took a sip from his tea. Well, I disguised my shadow clone pretending to be one of Orochimaru's spies, didn't make it as handsome as me, of course. Of course, she rolled her eyes, he continued, I offered her a chance to come back, and do you know what she told me? Tsunade frowned, narrowing her eyes, I hope it's not anything a spy of Orochimaru would be glad to hear, then again, she took a sip out of her tea, smirking, she probably called you names like asshole or something. Now that made him laugh, I do remember her calling me an asshole, and a creep. The blonde snickered at that, well, she got the creep part right. Now hold on a sec, he looked affronted, but a grin was tugging at his lips, just so we're clear, I am not a creep, I am a super pervert. She facepalmed, that makes it even worse, they both laughed. Finishing all his tea, Jiraiya set the cup down on the desk, it looks like we won't have to worry about her loyalties anytime soon, she rejected my offer, it seems that meeting Naruto is a lot more important to her than being Orochimaru's subordinate, he then frowned, although, she did admit that if she were approached a few years back, she would have come back to Orochimaru regardless, it seemed that she owed him a lot. Tsunade placed a hand on her chin, it would make sense for Orochimaru to have a hold on these kids, if she had defected then our deal would have been off, she shook her head slightly, still, I am relieved that Shed chosen to stay, it was quite a risk just to integrate her as a leaf shinobi, I hope this investment doesn't lead to ruin, she looked back at him, so were you satisfied by the outcome, Jiraiya? He crossed his arms, nodding, yes. Shed make a fine addition to the village, I believe we don't have a shinobi who specializes in audible genjutsu, adding to that the abilities you've told me last night, HMMN, now that I think about it, I didn't see her using those chakra chains of hers. Good, the blonde sipped from her tea, I specifically told her not to use it in battle, only in training, I don't want others to know that she's an Uzumaki. Too many complications? She nodded, rising up from her seat, she stood beside one of the windows, looking outside, especially with that old war hawk lurking about, who knows what that one will do when he finds out, she glanced back at him, so what are your plans now? After training Naruto and coming back, I am sure, besides updating me on your test on Akage, there's something important you wanted to tell me. Jiraiya took out a small bottle of sake inside his vest and refilled his empty cup, seeing that, Tsunade immediately drank all of her tea and then stretched out her empty cup at him, he shook his head with a smile, refilling it with sake, not surprising, when it comes to drinking, you definitely won't be missing out. Of course, who do you think you're talking to? He chuckled, yeah well, I am glad I can make your day, on the other hand though, I have to say that I'll be leaving the village today. Tsunade stopped for a bit and then continued on, drinking the sake in one big gulp before placing it back on the desk, is it about the Akatsuki? He nodded, she narrowed her eyes, are they on the move? 
you told me they will target Naruto in about three or four more years, we should still have time. I don't think they'll target him anytime soon, he rubbed his chin, I am sure word hasn't gotten out yet that the Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tailed Fox is back at his home village. Well, if not Naruto then, they'll target the others first, they probably already have some of them to begin with. While we don't know the exact number of tailed beasts that the Akatsuki have already captured, excluding Naruto, we know for certain that they don't have the fifth case cages one tail, one Jinchuriki from the Hidden Stone, and two from the Hidden Cloud, as for the Hidden Mist Village, with the fourth Mizukage gone, it's anyone's guess whether or not they have their tailed beast under their control. Tsunade placed a hand on her chin, that leaves us with four unknown in total. He nodded, the Akatsuki are on the move, of that I am certain, but they're also cautious. From what? He smirked, you tell me, with the rise of Leaf Shinobi scurrying about in different parts of the Land of Fire, not to mention the Hidden Sand Village doing pretty much the same thing, it's not much of a surprise that the Akatsuki won't do anything drastic to get anyone's attention. So it's because of what I started that somehow slowed down their plans, she leaned back on the wall, as of yet, I haven't received any reports of suspicious activity, though I doubt the Akatsuki will just let themselves get caught, she shook her head, no, we can only prepare when the time comes for them to make their own move. Not if we make the move first, she stared back at him as he returned her gaze seriously, what do you mean? That's why I am leaving, drinking all his sake in one gulp, he gave her a grin, I am going to find out where the Akatsuki are hiding. Her eyes widened at that, you serious? Totally, his grin got even wider. What? Are you that worried about me? That's not, she sighed, pinching the bridge of her nose, fine, at least tell me which shinobi you'd need as backup. He shook his head at that, you know me well enough, Tsunade, it'll be fine on my own. She looked away, gritting her teeth, he knows how dangerous just a single member of the Akatsuki is, yet he still plans on going at it alone, idiot, brows furrowed, she turned back to him and axed. Do you even have a plan? I have a few hunches where their base might be located. Standing up from his seat, he placed down his empty cup beside hers. Don't worry, I'll let you know once I find something. Trust me, it'll be fine. She sighed again. All right, just be careful. Okay. His expression softened. I always am. Ooh, the feeble rays of light bled off from the horizon until they flickered out and completely disappeared. Leaving the forest as dark as the night sky above. Clouds parted ways to a gleaming moon shining its light in the sleepy forest floor where three silhouettes flew by underneath the canopy of trees, hours passed by, and a sea of stars complemented the night sky, while the moon shifted above, growing bigger and illuminating more details of the world below. The tallest of the trio brought up his left fist, stopping by a branch overlooking a small clearing, the other two landed on the branch beside him. What gives? Why are we stopping? Kakashi sensei. Naruto acts. The silver-haired Jonin raised a finger, explaining, if we continue, by daylight well reach the border between the land of fire and wind. How can you tell? If you've noticed, the air around here is drier and the forest thinner as compared to before, he jumped down into the clearing with the other two followed after. All right, team, well set up camp here for the night, it's better we get to rest up in the shelter of the woods rather than the harsher elements of the desert, well resume our journey at dawn. Comma. It was a bit after dinner when Naruto unrolled his bedroll and laid down, he noticed Sakura doing the same thing while Kakashi Sensei kept first watch, using his arms as a pillow, the blonde looked up at the night sky painted by a shimmering sea of stars. When he was a young boy, oftentimes he would find himself on the roof of his apartment, had stay there for a while just to stare at the stars, he had overheard from one of the villagers that their deceased loved ones lived up there, that they were still looking out for them even though they were gone. That had started his curiosity as he gazed upon them and wondered if his parents had ever loved him. If they loved me enough, would they always look out for me too? He thought, reaching out a small hand to the stars. He blinked, and the memory was gone. Naruto had his hand outstretched to the sky, oh. Nowadays, it was a rare thing for him to think about his parents, he had learned to eventually let go of his yearning and jealousy towards the village children. It was the day when he first met Sasuke, it was through finding a kindred spirit when he felt that he wasn't alone, knowing that there was someone else that understood his pain made things a bit easier. Whether we find a clue, a sign, anything that'll help, it's one step closer to saving Sasuke. Naruto clenched his fist as if catching the stars, I won't let Orochimaru have his way, that's a promise. Ooh. Tiyuya sat silently as she watched the night sky. The stars were especially bright this evening, she smiled slightly, thinking to herself, there is some difference between living as a leaf shinobi and as a sound shinobi. I don't need to stay holed up inside those damned hideouts of his, 
there won't be any more fuckers after me as most of the people here don't even notice me, to them, I am just another mask among the crowd. You were a subordinate to Orochimaru, a criminal and a traitor to the Hidden Leaf. The Hokage may have pardoned all your crimes, but that doesn't mean others won't hold that against you. Tasuki's voice rang inside her mind, turning her expression solemn. What would Naruto think if he ever found out who I really was? Lowering her head, she hugged her knees closer. He probably wouldn't want anything to do with me, after all. This vessel is an important part of his dream. It has the flesh that Lord Orochimaru desires, but you have taken too much time in retrieving it, Kimimaro spat, his eyes narrowed. Tayuya grinded her teeth at the realization of their failure. Everything we did, everyone, Jirobo, Kitamaru, and now Sakan and Yukon are missing too. Fuck. Am I the only one out of the team alive? No. I refuse to believe that they're dead. They're too much of a bunch of sick bastards to even give up the ghost. Hey, jerk. Naruto stood up, fist outstretched. I've had just about enough of this nonsense you're yakking about. Naruto. I am taking Sasuke back now. He jumped towards her former leader. Hey, wait a second. The blonde's words snapped Tiyuya out of her stupor. Brows furrowed and fists clenched. She concentrated a lot of chakra on her feet and jumped high above, overtaking the blonde and falling down to his level. Naruto Uzumaki. She slugged him hard right in the face. Thanks for watching.